As the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the world, people were forced to stay indoors and practice social distancing. For many, this meant a loss of connection and community. But for the fly fishing slash tying enthusiasts of the world, it was a chance to come together in a new and meaningful way. TNL was a fly tying show that had gained a dedicated following over the years. Every Thursday night, people from all over the world would tune in to watch the hosts, Tim and Dana, as they shared tips, techniques, and stories about their love of fly fishing and fly tying. As the pandemic hit, Tim and Dana knew that their show could be a source of comfort and connection for their viewers. They kept doing their virtual fly tying workshops, encouraging their audience to participate and share their own experiences. And participate they did. The TNL family quickly grew, as people from all walks of life found solace in the shared passion for fly fishing. They gathered online every Thursday night, eager to learn, share, and connect with others who understood the joy and peace that fly fishing brings. Through TNL, the fly fishing community was able to find a sense of belonging and purpose during a difficult and uncertain time. And as the pandemic waned and life slowly returned to normal, the TNL fam remained a close-knit and supportive group, bonded together by their love of fly fishing and the outdoors. Join Tim and Dana as they embark on their fifth season of TNL Fly Time. Yeah, just you're the guy. Yeah, oh, that's there, you yeah. on the yellow over there. On the left. Oh man. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. man. I figured out that artificial intelligence stuff. Is that how we're, we're talking about? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Like, well, at least we uh, yeah. were able to get I that know. done. Well, I on just, our own. I literally, it is so epic. I went in there and I was like, "Hey, create a fly tying show." And uh, so it's supposed to run tonight, so we don't even have to be there. Really? Huh. Yep. So I thought, well, hey, while well, you're here, play some games. Oh, oh look at come, that. On, come on, come on, come on, come oh, on! Watch oh. over those fireballs. So. Uh, yeah, they got me. Um, <laughs> you're, you're gone. Enter <laughs> some, I just, I don't some more coins. Oh man, oh, I, I don't have us. coins. What's R three? Well, I guess no. I get it. Just you got to be as good as me. So no. What? Anyways, hey, do you want to check on Facebook and make sure that yeah, yeah, AI yeah. is running our show because that would really suck if we didn't. Uh, Oh no! Wait. Show up Let's see here. Side. Um. Yeah. yeah. Like it's. It yeah. said it'll go live on Facebook and oh, YouTube. Oh, it's it's live. No, but I know. No, but no, look. I know. Well, you, no, dude, you what, just want what me we're to die. doing is live. You just want me to die here. Look it's at this. All good. It's look artificial right. intelligence, Tim. It's artificially. It, it's artificially working. <laughs> like it's not oh, working. Oh man, dude. What the heck? <clears throat> Um, yeah, it, I can see you playing video games live. I literally paid 25 bucks, <sighs> and the AI said it would create a fly tying show for us. You should have paid 50. <laughs> there wasn't an option, Tim. <laughs> I'm literally... Um, well, okay, well. I, um, hi, everybody. <laughs> this is a good opportunity that maybe... 
Is there a commercial you break? Or <laughs> say hi to people. Uh, and figure out the show. Yeah, let's talk. To at maybe. which level of uh, literally? Our vision for it is for people to come out here to enjoy the spot and to find peace, I guess. Like, um, a lot of people ask us if we're gonna get Wi-Fi out here, and we're like, no, like, this is a place to disconnect and reconnect with your family and with yourself and just find quiet. didn't work like we thought it was <clears throat> well, um we were winging it let's just say ai can't replace everything no nope, definitely not your beautiful face well that's what it said it would do <laughs> i quite literally <laughs> wrote a script for a live stream <sighs> for thursday night live because i thought hey we can just hang out and we don't have to you don't have the tiny flies i don't have to uh do the things that you do over do there. Do. Do you do, do lots of things. There's many screens over there that I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> There's like a DJ board in the corner. There's knobs, people. There There's a lot a of colored knobs. DJ board in it, the corner, yeah. and it gives us wonderful little Ooh. chimes like that. I so, like that. Like it. welcome back, folks. This is Thursday Night Live, season five. Season five. Episode two. Episode two. And what's more important than us playing video games and getting caught? <laughs> it, what was that? It's 1941. So there's 1941, 1942, 1943, 19xx. Yeah. We saw them all. Saw we them have all. the whole arcade. We maybe do. And uh, let us know where you're from and let us know. Uh, in French, they say, et quel boisson? Et quel boisson? <laughs> Is Bilo never? He's on the replay squad, <laughs> yeah, so he's not we here to fix us. never know what we're actually saying in French. And uh, that's how it works. So what's up, Terry Sather, Mike Dumont, Doug from uh, High River, Cam, Darren Smith, Eric Agustin. Guaranteed yeah. he's already throwing out <laughs> numbers like of some chair kind. chair was a little high there. Uh, uh, Beggs, Brucey. that's an epic game. Oh, yeah. um, I know Ooh. what's wrong. YouTube. Maybe he's... Remember that one Tur guy that was like, like you throw those phone numbers and oh, he yeah, was like yeah. super pumped to get you. And then Cole, Cole, we climbed and Cole's like, hey, maybe you can <laughs> fix my, my, la my legs or whatever. Legs. So uh, Battle for Midway, that was 1941. But what we are going to do is implement some epic battles. Um, we're going to call Game it battles. this halftime show and then there's beer break. Yeah. When we need a beer break. We might throw in some Street Fighter 2 <laughs> or... Such, such awesome arcade awesome games. things. So yeah, Barry Dickow from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. So they oh, have no. that going up down there, and we're gonna tie some flies. We are. But if you're new here, let us know. Um, just double checking to make sure Austin got in because he had called earlier. Yeah. And he got a kid for Christmas. <clears throat> he, we just want to make sure he's here. 
Uh, I know some of the folks are down at I have four um, down in Calgary tonight. So um, maybe they're going to tune in at halftime and see see what's happening on this end. Uh, speaking uh, of I have four, that's that's coming up here for us too, isn't it? <laughs> that's in the news break, oh. Tim. Don't jump ahead. Not jumping. Uh, what I do want to do is say that uh, in your kits, okay, if you bought a kit, you're considered a VIP member, and you get a special raffle number in your kit. Um, you're gonna want to try to get those. Maybe find that. Yeah. You're gonna try to want to get those. There's Tom, Austin. Mr. Tom Pape, where is he? Austin there Thorne. he is. I'm in. I'm in. Awesome. He's in. There Austin is. is in. Um, Tom's drinking Elysium IPA. We got to mm. get more creative, Tim. If you guys really want to do us a I favor, know. drop off a six pack of anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is about a, about as creative as we get ever. Yeah, because I it's mean, so good. It's good. I mean, and uh, they're, yeah. it's brewed pretty local. It is a mojito, <clears throat> so basically, it is fermented. Not well, yeah, honey. It is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Did you and know that, that it's still not vegan? I I'm don't even know what vegan I, I, is. I, I figured this out the other day. No no bees. Oh, man. No honey, apparently. No, oh, bees? Because bees Cause taint it. Because you're using their Oh, like if you were drinking milk from a cow and it's... <laughs> right? Yeah, no, that's it, I guess, thing. yeah. A milky sweetness. All right. So uh, what we do here when you're new, we give a round of clicks for the mm. new guy. So Austin, new, new guy, if you're also new, let us know. Um, Tim's going to run you quick through what the kits are, how to, how to follow along. And, um, and then we're going to go jump into some new scenes and we're going to get going on our first fly, which is the Frenchy nymph. Mm. Um, so throw in some like pink thread would be best. Pink would be best. And like, uh, now who's jumping ahead to the new scene? No, I know, but I'm just like, <laughs> some people getting a little like anxious <laughs> out there. Yeah. Some pink, some pink uh, thread would be good. Something small. Yeah. Got a couple new things we're trying out tonight, and one of them is this. Tim by himself. <laughs> that happens once in a while. For the rest of the night. All right. So, guys, I want to talk about our kits a little bit, okay? So what's uh, what's super important about the kits is that you have one. Uh, that's not the end of the story, because we also do give you all the recipes and everything. If you need the materials and you want to tie on your own. Why should they have one? Why should you have a kit? Well, there's many reasons to have a kit, but mainly... I tie out a, a kit every week with you guys. Um, this kit makes life so easy for you. Really, you have um, <laughs> so many questions from the side panel. Um, so it, each week, um, you have an episode. So for instance, let's look at this one. So I'll pull out episode two. Season five, episode two. So what each you're getting- Each week is an episode, each, right? Each, each week is. Yeah. And what you're getting in there is you're getting <clears throat> um, individually packaged, you're getting wolf flies. Not only did we tie them for you once already, um, but we're giving you um, four to five times, uh, according to Colin last week, like 14 flies. He pretty much tied out of one pack. But He tied um, <clears throat> 16, 16 flies out of an episode. He had to add hooks yeah. um, and some what we'll call hardware. But he had enough material to tie 16 flies. That's incredible. There was a lot of dubbing last week. Yeah, or else his flies were just hooks with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see the flies, so yeah. let's just be honest. This is just what we've heard. <laughs> But yeah, being uh, having a kit, on. guys, makes it uh, super. I don't have easy. pink thread options. White thread, and then use um, a marker after. Yeah, white thread with marker, or anything that's like even a red <coughs> is fine, or purple. It's meant to create a hot spot, but we're doing that with the materials anyway, so don't stress. Yeah. Anyways, carry on. Kits. Um, yeah. So kits. Why it's you super get two, easy for two you? Two patterns. Two patterns. You're getting each patterns fully tied. Fully tied once. Plus, you get all the materials to tie each of those patterns up to five times. Yep. Um, and then the kits, they're great because you can tune in live. Mm -hmm. Tim will walk you through each fly. Uh, if you can't tune in live or if the live is going a little quick for you, we have Quick Ties sponsored by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and those come out the next morning after the episode. And... Um, yeah, you just go back in and watch them just like any YouTube video, but it's designed around what you have in your kit, and your kit is full of materials. If you don't have a kit, it's okay. You can go on our website, flyfishingbowriver.com backslash TNLS5, 
and go down and find these flies and all the materials there for the rest of the season. So you don't have to buy a kit. Mm -hmm. uh, everything here is free. You just have to tune in and have a lot of fun with us. Uh, but we have found that these kits really enhance your experience here at Thursday Night Live. Yeah, they do that. They, uh, they streamline the process, make it easier for you. And honestly, it keeps the show running. So support and buy, yeah. buy a box. Um, and you get our faces to look at all the time. I mean, what's better than that? So new flying go card this week. No, this week you're still getting um, your mileage. <laughs> Extra mileage. Say, out of your last one. Uh, another real cool thing we do here is we have something over here mm. called the TNL official baking cam. Ooh. Simple that now. is artificial intelligence. I said, draw a cheesecake for the show, <laughs> and it uh, it worked. Really? This so one, yeah, this that's one really is. truthful. Okay. Um, well, it looks good. I need it. But that is a cheesecake. One of my favorite desserts is a cheesecake. So every episode, we have a baking cam, and if you want to bake something and get it on the baking cam, you can do two things. You can bake it, take pictures, Send them to us. Nobody sent any in this week, so we had to use artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you can do, which is our favorite, uh, I'm going to get yelled at for the audio of the <laughs> too baking cam, so we'll just correct that. Uh, you can bake something and drop it off. In fact, that's my absolute favorite I know. Thing. We can throw it live on a camera, its very own camera, and we can taste we'll, it and we'll tell you it. how. SMR, SMR style. And if you drug it, well, <laughs> we won't be back next week. <laughs> or we'll just be or, happier. Uh, <laughs> oh, whatever kind of brownies uh, you decide to make. Yes. That we'll be is slightly up suspicious, to you. So we'll eat them. No yeah. need to worry. We got you covered here. We will make things for those flies, uh, for the fish to eat called flies, and we will keep you and your taste buds tantalized with the TNL mm. official baking camp. Tantalized. Uh, Trevor tuned in late, and he missed everything. We should do bingo <laughs> or fly. What's that? What is that? Well, flyingo? Flyingo? Well, that's actually one of the best parts of the show. That's the best part of the show. Because mm -hmm. now that we brought it up, what you need to know is let's head on over to a little bit of a news. Oh, breaking flash. news. Do, 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 do. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. It's got to take right. a second to appreciate these beautiful scenes and the music. This is Very your good. choice. I know. I you love it. to jazz up the news scene. Got to jazz it up. Well, that's funny you should ask. <laughs> what is Flyingo? Well, folks, it is absolutely what it sounds like. Yeah. Fly fishing bingo. Fly fishing bingo. With a chance to win. And I do say chance because. Opportunity. Opportunity to win some pretty awesome prizes. In fact, there is they're a, stacking up. They are stacking <laughs> up because there's a wonderful thing on the show called The Wizard. And The Wizard loves to take the winners through the doors of freaking doom. Mm hmm. And I bet they're getting more doomy as they are. They're uh, getting more the doomy. And they're getting trickier. <laughs> there was three doors. Uh, and I've added seven more. Oh, so many. But so wait, is there a way to maybe get through the doors of doom that without is getting a good crushed? Good point, Tim. Uh, tell me more. Because you download a free bingo card. It's absolutely free. And uh, just for the folks in the back. Seriously though, it's absolutely <laughs> free. It's, it's free. Just for the you folks had to be the there back. like a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> uh, it might come back. <laughs> it might. So you win, right? You download the card, You're and uh, I know some of you have put 15 emails into the entry. <laughs> uh, noted. We <laughs> see all the emails. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if, but well done. <laughs> but here's the thing: if you win Flyingo, okay, you just we call them out. You'll see there's a program. It all does. It's computer orientated. And then what we do is we, well, we don't do it. The wizard does it. Sends you through the doors of doom. And there's a good chance, 33% chance, that you uh, lose it all. Mm. But something new this year called Captain Clutch. Ooh. Still. <laughs> that camera. Here, you got a better I chance. Do Let's do it. Boom. That's Captain Clutch, folks. And Captain Clutch is a sticker we sell on our website for $50. 
But it's not just a sticker. It is uh, immunity. That immunity. will grant you immunity from Doors of Doom. Also note, when you purchase the sticker, the email to which you purchase it will match with the... Um, this is such good music. The sticker will match. The email will match with the email on the bingo card. And that's how you are immune. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is good. Um, so... I don't know why I wouldn't let you use your email, uh, but what you need to do is check your junk mail if you use your email. Um, Okay, so uh, no cock de leon fibers. What could I use as a tail? This is time to ask some good questions. Great question, Darren. I would go ahead and just grab any soft hackle feather you have. Um, That'll do just fine. And worst case scenario, if you don't have that, just stick with a little bit more of your pheasant tail. Well, you, you could use a few strands of that. But really, any feather is going to work. That's a good point. A lot yeah. of people are without Leon's cock, and they're wondering what to <laughs> use. <laughs> Who knew about Leon? I don't know. Leon was sought after. <laughs> cock de Leon is like a very, um, it's a very <laughs> specific material that gets used almost only for tail fibers. And yeah, they're, they're, it's, not, it's not cheap to buy one anyway. So anything pretty will work. Anything pretty All right, let's get back to some announcements, and we're going to get into tying some flies here. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, one of our fantastic sponsors. Yeah, They've got an app. <laughs> they they have an app, and you can download this app on Google, on the App Store, whatever kind of phone you have that does those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any of those other phones uh, that don't so matter. So that's, that's what their app looks like. So you can go in, and you just pop it up, and it's like, Oh my goodness. And then what you need to know is something really cool here is that they're selling um, single kits. So if you love the show and you don't have the $300 for the whole freaking thing, uh, you can go in there and purchase the singles. So the flies that we tied tonight, they're going to be for sale right now and you can go buy them and then you can have them and follow along with your quick ties. Mm -hmm. Uh, In those kits, those are the same kits. You get the fly totally tied. And you get material for up to five more for twelve bucks. That's that's yeah. six six four dollar <clears throat> foams. Yeah, yeah, it's, and I'd you say get it's a good bargain. All the free education comes with this. But here's something really cool that showed up at the fly shop today. Ooh. Um, let that? me just type in something here because they're often uh, referred to on the show as. <laughs> um, look at that, folks. Got them right here. You can go get yourself a set of Dana scissors. <laughs> um, and if you don't know what Dana scissors are, what are they? Well, Dana scissors are really designed. It's, it came from this idea that you steal your good friend's scissors and you cut things that shouldn't be cut with scissors. That's what you use them for. So wire, or you use them for lead wraps or whatever. You just use these handy scissors. You don't want to use them for anything else, but use them for that. So um, our friends at Shore have come up with scissors that can be used for what Tim used my good scissors <laughs> for uh, three years ago. And now they're literally considered Dana's scissors. Dana's so scissors. yeah, head over there, guys. Check it out. RockyMountFlyShop.net if you don't have a phone, which I highly doubt. And Travis asked a good question. Uh, you do get an actual sticker. We ship it out and we ship it on an actual form that gives you your immunity number. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty cool, too. All right, sure that's, sticker. that's the app. So what's next on the docket? Uh, mm-hmm. January 19th, which I believe is next week. Uh, yes, if you're is. in the Pincher Creek, Coleman area, mm-hmm. Southern Alberta, Alberta Fly Girls, she might even have already completely booked up uh, yeah, capacity yeah. in the, uh, yeah. Where she is, but that's awesome. She's bringing a group of people together, kind of open house to... What we call yeah. uh, a satellite mm-hmm. um Tying club, so whatever club, I don't like the word. But just like <laughs> Rocky Mountain Fly Shop's doing every Thursday, it's the satellite uh, show. And so uh, you have a gathering, and then you bring people, and you put it on the big screen, and they sit there and tie, and you just hang out, and you help them, and we walk them through the flies just like this. So there's a bunch of people right now down at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and next Thursday they will also be there, but they will also be down in Pincher. Mm-hmm. Because Jose is hosting it. 
Yeah. Uh, if you want to host a satellite club and we can help you out with some materials, uh, give us a shout, email, whatever you got to do, um, and let us help you make that satellite club a reality. <laughs> club. Club, club. All right. You're up for the class. What we're tying tonight, folks, we are going to tie a couple of classics. Well, one super classic, one that's also, I guess, a classic. But we're going to tie a Frenchy nymph. Okay, so this is kind of traditionally more of a... <clears throat> Excuse me, a Euro nymphing uh, nymph, but it is a great pattern, super simple, very similar to pheasant tail, a little bit of a hot spot on it. Um, and then we have Ranzi's Gypsy King, which is also a really neat fly, kind of originally was a crane fly imitation, um, which is kind of stemmed on over to, hey, this actually looks a lot like a stone fly as well, so I think it gets fished a lot for that. But in varying sizes, we're going to tie a little smaller today, so it might uh, be maybe a more accurate imitation of a crane fly. Um, but yeah, two great flies. Um, you can see the threads there to get them ready. So for the first fly, we're going to be tying with something red or pink or whatever color you have. Not the end of the world, but we're going to go a little smaller on that one. It is a nymph. It's a size 14, so we'll use 70 to near. Um, then we're going to use some uh, 140 black UTC or something kind of comparable. It'd be like a 6 aught Beavis or something like that. Uh, dark in color is good. We want it to be a little thicker because we're working with foam. So first foam fly of the year for all those foam oh, geeks out there. Let's say foam is home home yeah so those are the I flies that I are coming referred at you. to them as a different name um before what do you mean uh foam horse because they oh. just love the foam the foam uh also note if you need a sticker um they're on a website just go to flyfishingbover.com and go to the store go to the stickers and you can order yourself uh captain clutch why don't you just keep it over there because the sticker is super cool know. too uh, but that sticker comes with more than just a sticker. It comes with immunity. And immunity, uh, you'll see, last week, Andy got crushed by Doors of Doom. He did. He did take home a consolation prize, he but did. it was yes. not as much as he could have. Uh, also, we talked about the VIP raffle ticket. So if you've purchased a kit, okay, mm -hmm. you're going to get a raffle ticket in there. And your raffle ticket has a number. And uh, I'm going to tell you how to use that after uh, we've tied the first fly, because that's what we want to do. Costume nights. All right. We need options, ideas. I've had a few, like Redneck Night. Yep. So anime like this. Night. So anime. we're in it. <laughs> um, well, we're, look, we're looking for some suggestions, guys, because yeah, we want to know what you want to dress those up Those are like super too. fun because super fun nights. everybody gets to play. Everybody ropes. Everybody rides. Here on Thursday Night Live. Um, it reminds me of spring. Well, you're lucky yeah. that you get spring in the foam in the foam in the spring. We don't get that until yeah. a little later. Sometimes never. <laughs> it's <laughs> sometimes so never. So weird, the dry fly fishing around yeah. here. All right. And the last announcement on the docket it's is a big one. I have four 2023 is in Olds on March 25th. And I'm telling you folks and the folks who are in Calgary tonight, you are more than welcome to come and see the show again because this is actually a festival atmosphere. Um, the show starts at 12. I encourage you to show up at 9 or 10. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop's down the street. They've got they've moved across the street. It's huge capacity in there. Uh, we'll have lots of fun things going on there. And then we'll go to the show. Then after the show, we walk the other way across the street to Trax Pub where we can congregate and get to see each other and hang out. Uh, as always, uh, between us at Fly Fishing Bow River and Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, we'll have lots of prizes and giveaways and probably some more float trips. Ooh. Um, so definitely yeah. worth your while to come and hang out. Yeah, The wizard versus the captain. See that? Oh, that that is, that's a good that one. That is good. Yep. Col Colin's yep. on fire. Yeah. Oh, it actually came up earlier than that. I saw it. I read it. Oh, Sean. Sean was up there. Wizard oh, versus yeah. captain. Okay, night. we'll give him credit. <clears throat> Yeah, well, that's he, a good suggestion. But I, Sean yeah. is the birth of both. He's the birth of both. He yeah. really is. He's not the birth of any fishing fish pick photos. But <laughs> <laughs> Did you say fish dick photos? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to brag about, right. but hey. So we're going to um, just pop over here quickly because I think it's important that you guys see how to get a sticker or how to get a kit or how to check out all the materials so yes, you can buy your important. kit right here if you want. Two ninety seven, uh, free shipping. Uh, that's Canadian, so it's like two hundred and some bucks American. 
Uh, your flying oak cards are also right here. This is your one-stop resource uh, page. Mm-hmm. Everything you there. need. And then your your flies here. So for this week, the Frenchy Nymph. All right. There is there. And the cock, Leon's cock, is what's been talked cock. about. Cock to Leon. Um, right there. There it is. Okay. And then there's the Rance's Gypsy King and all the materials. And so for next week, episode three. Oh, my. Every single thing is there. And then I forgot to do this. But what you can do is you can click on these pictures and that will take you over to uh, the YouTube. This is going to be weird because it's our our live stream. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna double down on that. But anyways, you go over there and you've got these uh, quick ties here. Um, and so those are last week's two flies. And you go and tie them out of the package or get your own material. And do fun things like that. So yeah. well, Tim. Yeah. Much to do about nothing. <laughs> What to do about lot here? Lattes. Well, yes. Looks like lots of people are gonna make it out to uh, to old, which is awesome. That is definitely worth coming for, guys. Can't wait to show everybody <coughs> after you're done tying this all the things they can win tonight. Oh, or or let go. <laughs> like, well, you chance. Know, well, it's, so this is this is the thing we, he didn't mention. So if you don't succeed and get through the doors of doom, what actually happens is. The prizes just keep stacking up back here in the room. Yeah. And someone's going to take them all. So we have prizes every week um, that we're going to do for Flyingo, but they start stacking up. So you might get four or five yeah. weeks. That might be $500 worth of stuff by the time it gets well, given away. So it's already. It at, is already. Each, each week is like two to $300. At least, yeah. Um, But what's cool is when they stack up, and I think last year we went four. That was max. Yeah, we went four weeks. And That's then a lot. was it the fifth week or the fourth week? So three, I three, think it was three, yeah. three prizes parlayed into the fourth one. Um, and if that poor guy didn't, if we didn't have, there was no Captain Clutch last year. And uh, I mean, that could have been really sad. Well, it was sad it, for, the, for the other ones. It was for the sad, few yeah. people before that. So I remember it was a kid too won it. It was awesome. I yeah. But, uh, yeah. Edmonton, uh, John, Jonathan, I think. Jonathan's kid. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's tie yeah. this, let's tie this fly. <laughs> it is not long, uh, super quick. But this fly is a fish catcher, and uh, it's very. It was used in like Euro nymphian in uh, Europe. Yep. Europe European Europe. nymphian. Yep. And um, kind of a pheasant tail with a little bit of a twist and a hot spot, and uh, like we were saying earlier, it could be tied on a jig head or. Uh, like with a tungsten bead, or what we're gonna do? Throw yeah, some lead so wire. Throw on some it. lead in there. Um, quick uh, answer of question for Colleen. She's looking at where she can buy her IF4 ticket. Um, online or don't worry. Uh, they are shipping actual physicals to us, so we should have them next week, and they will be at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Uh, or the link is on their their website somewhere i don't know it's really been unclear so i will try to do my best to figure that out as tim ties we'll go from there we'll figure it out okay i'm gonna switch over mics here all right so let's uh let's get to work on our frenchy nip so you're gonna run in you're gonna grab your uh season five episode two kit um <clears throat> you're gonna notice there's two packages in there grab the one that says frenchy nymph on it it's got all the, the fancy pink beautifulness in it um, be careful as always when you take your stuff apart that there isn't uh, material that goes wonky but worked a little harder this year to change the packaging so we had less issues with this and you'll notice that there is um, everything is pretty much individual wrapped right down to the beads being out on their own um, but go ahead uh, first thing we're going to do let's just go ahead and get our bead secured on the hook and then into the vise so as always when putting a bead on you need to put the hook point <clears throat> needs to go through a moment here. I'm going to pull this out. There's a few staples to get out of that stuff, but we secured it so that it wouldn't go anywhere on you. Um, so we're going to use this, this gold bead. This uh, gold bead today is going to be a 764 on a size 14 Dairiki number 60 hook. Um, so when putting these in, you always want to go and put the point of your hook it needs to go through the small eye of the bead. So if you look at the bead on both sides, one will have a, uh, a smaller hole than the other, and you need to put it through the small one. 
Okay, we're gonna look like that when it's all placed. Go ahead and get that put into your vise. A uh, couple of comments on Tim's mic. Anybody need it louder? Because it's exceeding all levels right now, currently. <laughs> it is doing things, stuff and things. Yeah, just let us know, guys. Um, and for any of those new guys, like Austin, like yourself, or anybody else, uh, we have this real fancy thing. We just go type in there, say SOS in the comments, and we'll hold up. We'll do a little flashy flashy, and that's just going to let us know that you need us to either slow down, take a second for yourself to um, ask a question, or whatever it is, um, and we'll be able to help you from there. Okay? All right. So hopefully that volume is a little better for you guys. It sounds loud in my ears, but <laughs> maybe it doesn't for you. So... The first thing we're going to do is in your kit, you're going to see you have some um, little bundles of right there. You can see those lead wraps. So I want you to go ahead and grab one. We're going to put some lead wrap on here to start, and then we'll get our, our thread going on afterwards. So this is traditionally tied normally on a jig hook um, for the Euro Nymphers, and they go as deep as they can, as heavy as they can normally with their flies, because that's just the style of fishing it is. So they use a little bit different way of waiting, but being that we are not necessarily your own emperors per se. Let's, we're gonna tie it as how we tie it, how we use it. So go ahead and place uh, the wire on the far side of the hook, go near to you, grab a, grab a tag, and we're just gonna do three wraps, okay? So one, two, three. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's enough. Um, it's a small hook, so we don't wanna overdo it. We're gonna use the lead wraps to also create a bit of a, a thorax and taper on this fly. Um, go ahead and grab Dana's scissors, because hopefully you already have ordered a pair. And we're gonna get that all snipped out. And you wanna make sure you push down. Um, there's little tag ends that will form on those lead wraps. Just try to get them squeezed right down to the hooks. So they're out of the way. And we should be ready to get some thread going on here. So like I said before, I am tying with some UTC 70 in this fluorescent pink. Um, but whatever color you got going is fine. Red would be fine too. We're gonna start our thread just behind those thread wraps from the lead. We'll trim out that tag, just like so. And right away, we're gonna get into putting that uh, tailing material. So whether it's a uh, coq de leon or whether it's a hackle feather, whatever it is, <clears throat> that's what we got for you guys here today. Grizzly hackle, you can see it like so. We're gonna grab a decent pinch, um, nothing too crazy, but enough to, to basically tell that there's color, um, which is gonna probably work out to about eight or 10 fibers off of that stem. So go ahead and pinch them pull them off, try to keep the butts kind of together like that. So when I when I pinched them with my fingers, it all came off together. I'm going to switch fingers so I can see some general length. So I want to create a tail that's roughly one hook length in length out the back. Okay, so I kind of measure it like that with my fingers. I'm going to bring it back to the back of the fly. I'm going to switch hands, okay? And then I'm going to leave it like this. Now I'm going to take my scissors in. I'm going to measure off of those lead wraps right there. And I'm going to just go ahead and cut. Just like that. So now I have them cut. I'm going to tie them in right behind those lead wraps. Get a securing wrap on top. We want to make sure that these <coughs> tail feather or fiber, sorry, stay right on top of the hook. So once I get the butts down, I'm just going to use my fingers to work it back towards the bend of the hook, but not too far down the bend because we don't want that tail to um, go over the end and point down. Okay, so right where I've left it is probably good. Okay. You always get greedy and do one more wrap, but that's all right. Now I'm going to bring my thread back forward. Okay, we're going to go back into our kit and we're going to look for this here. Okay, so we got some size small gold wire. We're going to use this gold wire to act as a rib as we come up this fly because we're going to secure um, our pheasant tail with it. So the reason I keep coming back up to that thread wraps there where I left the um, that lead wrap is that we're just gonna kinda continually add materials and create a taper down the fly. So this time I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna butt that wire basically right up against it where I left those thread wraps from the lead and work that back down to the tail. Okay, then I'm gonna one more time, come back forward. So now we're gonna go into our kit and you're gonna see you got another, two more materials left that we're gonna add. We're gonna add some pheasant tail. Okay, so you got a really good decent clump of pheasant tail and you've got your nice fluorescent colored dubbing. So in this pheasant tail, I want you to grab a decent amount. I want you to grab, it's gonna probably work out to be 
somewhere eight to ten of those tail feathers, tail feathers off of the fiber there. So it looks something like that, okay? Um, we're using this to build the body, so we need a little bit more bulk than we might if we were just doing a tail. Now I'm going to come like this, and I'm going to trim off the very tips so they're a little thinner, um, and so that they're, everything's perfectly lined up. And now when I come in here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to put it right up against the lead wraps, take a thread wrap to secure it, and work it back to that same point where I've left the wire and the tail. And this time, I'm going to bring my thread all the way forward, put a few thread wraps overneath that lead, like so, making sure it's nice and secured. And I'm going to leave my thread right behind the bead. I'm just going to throw a little half hitch in there, which remember we talked about last week. It's just a simple overhand knot. That's just basically saving our work. So hit the save button. All right. <clears throat> Time to check in with the good folks. You guys all right? Need anything? Let us know. I don't know. see the SOS is on. Um, remember. <coughs> just remember. <laughs> Nobody knows what to oh, remember, man. but just remember. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screens. There's eight screens in this room right now. It's a few. <sighs> yeah. But uh, I, li I like to see the Captain Clutch stickers going out. Oh, are and, they? I uh, like yeah, that. well, people are getting prepared. <laughs> prepared because they're scared. Well, buy one for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> so if you notice a difference in the microphones... Um, they're different microphones for different purposes. So this yeah. one sounds deep and warm. Um, and and this one sounds really high. It's a little bit tinny. A little it's tinnier. a little on the high end because it is a microphone that does not is not able to have the same capsule as these ones here. But it's hands free. But it's hands free, and Mr. Blake Teague hooked us up. Uh, with the countryman, so that Tim could have it on his face, and we could avoid a lot of problems with the thing attaching to his chest. Um, so yeah, I want to thank Blake again for that. Yeah, huge. And uh, always, guys, if there's a problem with anything on your end, let us know, and we'll do our best to fix it, just like we did with Tim's mic. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also where you hold it on your face. I know it is kind of positional. Yeah. That better. <laughs> going for, we're going for some asthma. Okay. Uh, yeah. Looks like everybody. The good people are coming. Uh, favorite way to fish this fly is in the side of a fish's mouth. <laughs> Not nymphing. How to catch it. Euro nymphing. Yeah. Split shot. Get it down. Bounce the bottom because of the weight we've put on it. Should get down. Uh, we want her down there. Yeah. Want it nice, nice and deep. Okay, guys. Let's come back to this fly. We're almost there. We're going to wrap um, Palmer up this time. We're going to Palmer forward this uh, pheasant tail. We're going to bring our rib back over top of it and tie it both off at the head. And then we'll just do a little uh, dubbing at the top to finish. So you could use hackle pliers if you like. I, I normally don't, but I like to suffer through this a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping this forward. You want to do touching wraps, making sure that material is basically covering up all the pink that you, you just laid down. As you can see as you go, this creates a really nice, realistic looking kind of fuzzy body. And if we did our tapering properly, it's going to start to taper up like it's doing. And once I get my thread up to the eye, I am going to put some dubbing just behind that eye. So I'm not worried about being super tight to it, but I'm going to come over. I'm going to cross over top of that pheasant tail, take a wrap behind. And then take a wrap in front. This is how we secure all of our materials, right? Wrap in behind, wrap in front. Once I know that's good and secure, it's not going anywhere, I can go ahead and trim it off nice and close. Okay. And now <laughs> there is two trains of thought here. One is that you would counter wrap over top of it. Um, the other train of thought is that you wouldn't because the actual issue is the way that your wire is going. Um, if you were to counter wrap it and you go to tie it off, it actually wants to slip against the thread and open those thread wraps back up from the wire. So I'm gonna go more traditional here. I'm gonna go with um, wrapping it the same direction I did with the pheasant tail. Nice, even segments as I go up. Okay, I'm gonna take it all the way up to just behind the bead. Do the same tie off process. So behind in front, behind in front. And you could helicopter it off, but when you got Daner scissors so handy. Oh, they are for sale. RockyMountainFlyShop.net. You can get your own set of Dana scissors for just five ninety nine. <laughs> there are reasons uh, five ninety nine, folks. If you buy twenty of them, it's free shipping. 
That's true. <laughs> 20 pair of dinners is never have enough. All right, guys, we're going to head on over to our dubbing. Now, this we did this last week on our flies where we created, um, I showed you many ways to put in dubbing, but we're going to do a dubbing noodle, which means I'm applying this directly to the thread that I'm using um, by using my fingers and twisting it on in this motion. Not like this, not playing a violin, <laughs> one motion, okay? So uh, Blake says that if he paid, would you get a manicure? Well, I... I love people's Haven't fascination with my nails. On Wednesday? Wednesday. Which is tough because we're climbing. Yeah, well. We have we'll it set it up in Pinoca for you and Ren to go have a daddy-daughter date and get your nails all done. All right, all right, all right. And if that doesn't work, uh, Mateo's going to put on some fake acrylics for you. <laughs> Perfect. That'll look real yeah. good. <laughs> I think Blake's got a nail fetish. Yeah. I well. don't know. Because it's deeply disturbing him. <laughs> well, he admitted he asked it every year. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's so awesome. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a nail week. biter. I'm nervous all the time. Yeah. What can I say? Okay. Right. Back right. to the pink Back to the noodle. And dub <laughs> the noodle and only roll one way. One way. This direction. One way. Only okay. roll one way, Tim. I'm only going to grab a Tim only rolls small one way. <laughs> small pinch here guys not much okay we really don't need a ton that's probably even a little bit much but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our thread just pull a little wisp and start rolling it on you don't need a very long one you're basically just covering up that little bit of thread wrap and then we're gonna make a hot spot with the thread okay and, so and even if you don't have pink or red thread uh so what tim was talking about earlier is just wrap the dub in and then call it a day yeah don't really worry about it this is kind of like a double a double job on this so we're gonna make a little bit here a couple wraps almost on top of each other and then move forward to the eye okay should run out of dubbing right like that and you can see how that built a really nice taper all the way from the tail where it looks small and it works its way up so it's a really good searching pattern in that sense and now that i'm up here at the head i'm just going to go ahead and, and grab my fancy shore whip finish tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to whip finish right behind the eye. And the, the original pattern calls for trying to make a bit of a hot spot, which seems kind of silly because we already have this pink, but we're going to do a few extra wraps. Instead of doing just like three, we'll do maybe five with our whip finish. Pull that tight. And as you can see, I'll show you my side of the flag. It's a little more visible. It creates a nice little hot spot on there, just in front, a little change in color. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here with my solar as bone dry. You guys know I'm kind of obsessed with this. You had Bruce at, uh, just a little pink noodle. <laughs> Got gets, it. Gets them every time. <laughs> I'm going to come in here and just touch the thread wrap. Stay away from that dubbing. Oh, it's going to add a little bit there. Let it soak in. That's the reason I like this bone dry. It's a very, very thin resin and we can cure it real fast. I'm just going to hit it with our light. That is so hot and sexy. Just like that, guys. That is your Frenchy Nymph. Tied in all varied sizes. This is a size 14. It'll probably be an all-around real good. You go up to a 12, down to an 18. Super easy to tie, so you can do it on smaller um, smaller hook sizes as well. But that is it. I suggest that is, you uh, that is great. stick that one in the fly box. Um, Colin supplied us with some materials here. He and a different color pheasant tail would be interesting to show everybody because fact, i tied one with this oh you did you. wow which camera do you want uh let's let's go back to the fly cam here so if you take a quick pick peek here so this is uh colin gave us some different color um i believe this is from shore too yeah it's from shore uh this is just a different color so if you were to change the color of your um your pheasant tail it can change the appearance of the fly so that's what that one appeared like wow there you go so a couple of my favorites, I actually do really like the, the red, but there's a, a tan and there's a black, which is a really good betas color for um, those of you who may love Another, I think, <clears throat> just spitballing here, but I think it would be cool if you added uh, me to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, but think about what you got there, but instead of pink, if you did green or olive. You got your like blue Some wing. sort of, or like caddis type. Yeah. Caddis or blue yeah, wing. that's sexy because I don't think a lot of people know that the pheasant tail can be come in colors like that. Yeah, lots of colors. All of is a did real he send us too. any Leon's cock? He did not. All right. We have some hackle that we'll, well show you because we're going to use it on the, the other one. Fly. On the next fly, yeah. 
And the next fly, and that's the Frenchy Nymph. A pheasant tail with a little hot spot. With a twist. And chartreuse would be also fantastic. Yeah. And that red. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's exciting. Yeah, those are the bread and butter. The bread and so butter. So looking at it, um, you know, sometimes people use like paintbrush fibers for a tail of like a mayfly. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think that would do on the tail of this for Leon's cock? Be totally fine. Right. Yeah, and then just take a marker, maybe. The, the point on the tail of these ones, guys, you want to see it. You do need to be able to see it. So a lot, of, a lot of times, um, even how we tie mayflies, where we split the wing or split the tail fiber, they're really difficult to see. They're quite clear and translucent. So yeah, a nice bar awesome. tail looks good. Cool. Well, that is um, all. let's do something like this. Let's say thanks to our sponsors, <laughs> and we're going to be right back in about one minute. See you in a minute. Our vision for it is for people to come out here to enjoy the spot and to find peace, I guess. Like, um, a lot of people ask us if we're gonna get Wi-Fi out here, and we're like, no, like, this is a place to disconnect and reconnect with your family and with yourself and just find quiet. Wow, what's that? That's the end of the commercial reel. <laughs> okay, Transition so... Uh, Switch mics, because people oh, yes. prefer you to be soft and sultry. And, uh, Did you say soft and sultry? I said, uh, see, that's what they love. That's what they love. Got to give the people that, what they need. That is a wonderful mic. <laughs> and then that allows us to turn up the background music and enjoy the party. So, Haven't uh, heard anybody complain about your music today. Well, because it's almost so silent, <laughs> they don't even know it exists. That could be. That could okay. Be. Uh, well, weird. It's Christmas music. What does that mean? It's the time of the season to, to give to give away, away. Stuff. Hence, the time and the moment is upon us. And you guys, we want to quickly show you. Uh, see, what music? Because our microphones are doing such a fantastic oh, job. Just filling the space. I'm taking With away all of the background <laughs> noise. Oh. When we do that, we can be soft and sultry. And I hope if anybody is uh, listening to the show on headphones, let me know. Yeah, that would really because be nice. this is B seven one oh nine DJ E's <laughs> DJ sometimes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Barry White. Trout Maharishi is a fan of Barry White. Um Please stop saying C O C K. <laughs> we can do what only we can do. Okay, so uh, my wife is sitting next to me and she heard the word betas and she wasn't sure what she heard, but I thought it had something to do with the male anatomy. It has nothing to do with the male that anatomy. Is, that is not true. That is a calabatus or a type of bug. Mm-hmm. Um, Some might call it a blue wing. <laughs> All right, so we've got so many <laughs> gifts to show you guys. We We're going to kind of do this back and forth quickly because this is uh, episode two where last week's winnings have gotten uh, parlayed into this week's show. They are adding. I can't, I can't even hold them all. <laughs> That's the problem because what I'm most excited for <sighs> yeah, tell is us a little bit our stuff. friends at Morning View Merchantile. I met up with them and they said, we have so many awesome things for all the TNL fam, and it's freeze dried goods. And so we've got freeze. <sighs> <laughs> and 
Anyways. Uh, anyways. <laughs> That's why you do this all the time. <laughs> okay, so in this giveaway this week is freeze dried ice cream sandwich bites. Oh. Freeze dried strawberries, which I can attest that these are absolutely uh, fantastic. Put them in your favorite, uh, like strawberry lemonade with coconut milk and some of those in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's called a pink drink. And then they've also <laughs> freeze dried some Skittles. Uh, as, amongst a bunch of other things, but this is what we're going to start with this week, okay? Yeah. So those are going to go in your giveaways. Very nice, very nice. And stacking up over on this side from, what is it, two weeks ago now, uh, we got a box of flies, mountain flies coming to you from us at Flyfish and Borber Outfitters, okay? So you got that fly box coming to you. We got a neck gator as well coming your way. I'm going to show this whole stack of things because not I, just I one. Yeah, cool yeah. that one. Because these are, these are, <laughs> all right. Um, so the problem with these is we wanted to give away one, but Colin through Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, like I said last week, is he said, you can't give away one. You have to give away two because once the person wins this, uh, they're going to want to get their friends a pair and he's sold out at the shop. So that's why we're giving away two for you and your friend. There's two in each, so uh, you don't need one for each foot. But they're gravel guards, yeah. um, and they're pretty epic, and they're Colin's hot pick of the week. Hot pick of the week. We're going to add in there an NRS hat. All right. We've got, we've got uh, from Fish Pond, we got a floating holder, yeah. floating bottle holder. From Fly Fishing Boat Outfitters, we got uh, Eat It. T-shirt, eat a T-shirt. That's a, a lucky one. We've got a Orvis hoodie, very very nice sun hoodie. If you don't have one of these in salmon color, you're gonna want this one. And then we have some NRS gloves, sun gloves. Yeah. All right, nice pair of those in size that will fit a man. And then on top of that, all the materials that we're going through tonight from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. So all these shore materials, which we're gonna walk through some more of those, that's all getting going, given, going, gone. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you get your bingo cards because you can't win without a Fly Ingo card. No, you cannot. You need and one. I set the maximum at 250 cards and we're at 221. So there's nice. still a few cards you there. Left. Uh, I see all your emails popping in and make <laughs> sure you get them. Um, so we'll talk about this when we get to Flango, but because we have a new segment on the show right now, mm -hmm. I forgot what I was going to talk about, but uh, do you have the Captain Clutch sticker? Because I do. To win Flango, you need to download a Flango card free, totally free. This is all free. And if you win, okay, you go to the Doors of Doom which is kind of scary. Um, and then you have a one in three chance of winning through the doors. The doors, the wizard gets a lot of people. So that's kind of the <laughs> kicker. Um, it but it's free. And if you want immunity from the doors of doom, which a lot of people in here are going to say, get immunity because doors of doom is kind of scary. And anyways, Captain Clutch will get you Captain through. Clutch. You go on our website, flyfishingboover.com, head over to the sticker section and purchase yourself a Captain Clutch sticker. And it's not free and it's not cheap, but uh, the price of immunity is one that you will have to decide. <laughs> it's worth it. Okay. Because it doesn't just last for one. It's for the whole season. The whole season. So you're immune the whole season. So you can win again and you can keep winning. You can keep, we've had multiple winners. Uh, ah, yeah. Captain Trump's the wizard. That is why he's Captain Clutch. <laughs> All right, so we're going to give this a try. A uh, new segment that we call Guide's Corner. Mm. Okay. And uh, it's a five-minute segment with a timer, and it will be on the screen, and it is a rant about something. <laughs> <laughs> This is good. This is good. A hot topic. Hot topic. You guys are free to comment, but we have five minutes to discuss. And um, I'm really trying to remember what I was going to discuss this week. 
Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I texted Janine. I said, do you remember what I was going to <laughs> talk about? And she said... She saved you. You, my friend, Ooh. are going to head this? over. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, look at this. This is just me and you folks for five straight minutes minus the 10 second transition. So now we're down to four minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, this is a chance for me to talk to you guys about something in the guide sort of industry, fly fishing industry, uh, or whatever industry I think I'm in. The thing tonight is quote unquote, the question, what is a good starter fly rod and reel? Well, I'll be watching your comments for you guys to pipe up and say what you think a good starter fly rod and reel combo or get up is. So I get this question a lot and uh, I talk to people on the river. I talk to people in my boat. I talk to people on social media and I don't think it is a dumb question. I think it is a question that needs more um, substance around it. And so I think well, I don't think I know the first thing that I say when I'm asked the question and we're down to three minutes and 45 seconds is TikTok. what is your budget? Because that question alone, my friends, will solve everything because personally, and this is all my opinion, is there's no such thing as a starter rod and reel because every rod and reel will catch fish. There definitely is better rods and reels, but there is no starter rod and reel. You don't advance to the professional level and graduate to a $1,500 fly rod. You can start with a $1,500 fly rod if it is in your budget. So I ask you kindly to think about your budget and to know what you want to spend. I also suggest that you choose to grow into your gear and don't grow out of your gear. What makes a rod better? Well, it's the materials that they use. So uh, for me, I play hockey. I get the, the, the stronger, lighter materials that go into hockey sticks. And the same thing goes into more expensive rods. They're not professional rods. They're not rods for better anglers. They are just better built. And to be honest, eventually they become more accurate, more consistently. Um, because the material's better and when you cast it doesn't lots of blah 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 we don't need to talk about that but the biggest thing that i want to get across is say you have a echo gecko you can still catch fish even when you're filming your best friend and it works <laughs> just like that if you have one of the tfo entry entry there we go entry level rods it doesn't matter a rod is a beginner rod or a rod is a professional rod and there's the difference is the price and the budget so check your budget um, and then go to the fly shop with that in mind before you go in and say what is a beginner rod is because eventually nobody wants a quote-unquote beginner rod you just need a rod that fits your budget and know that a uh, hundred dollars for a rod and fifty dollars for a reel and say hundred dollars for a fly line you're gonna go catch fish and now that I brought up the fly line, because I didn't bring it up before, I'm going to tell you that is where your money should be spent. Because if that line does not float, if it's a floating line, and it continues to sink into the meniscus of the river, you cannot mend. If you cannot mend, you cannot get a good drift. If you cannot get a good drift, no matter how pretty Tim ties the fly, they will not eat it. Wow, 58 seconds left, Tim. Any, any other good thoughts? Um, yeah. What fly should you buy with your starter fly kit? Starter well, Tim, <laughs> time is running out. You got 40 seconds. Uh, go, so go, go. The, my point of this rant is to just encourage you guys that it, it just understand your budget and, and it's okay. If you have 50 bucks, let's find something for 50 bucks. If you have 100 bucks, Let's find something. Don't think I'm new and I need to go get a beginner's fly rod. Uh, your budget matters more than anything because they 
all those rods catch fish and you know we could break down all those high-end rods versus the entry level rods but not seconds. necessary because uh go fishing get outside get what you can afford and stay out of the Tim, why didn't it end? <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to end. <laughs> it didn't end. <laughs> that was wonderful. I oh really enjoyed Anyways, that. Anyways, my time's up, and this has been another five-minute guides corner. And by another, I mean the first one ever. It's good. And it's uh, good. Like next it. week, we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Boxers or briefs. That's on the topic next week. Wow. All it right. got it hot is, in here. It is very warm in here. I, I, I anticipate thought, you my know, camera I was like, hey, like off. five minutes, I'd be ranting. You could be out there fanning the door well, with the fan douche. <laughs> the fan douche. Uh, oh, is it time for Fly Ingo? Oh, my goodness, folks. <laughs> Better go find so your cards. Good. Get them visible because oh, we are going to play. Oh, just giving away everyone's emails. <laughs> 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 and that was just Sean yeah. Ellison's. Yeah. <laughs> How do, we, how do we reverse? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Right. Roman uh, Quintana from Montana. We love you. We're glad you're here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Blake's man. got a great point as we read the comments. Spend your money on a good dude that will teach you something every time you go out. Um, and a great topic for why should you hire a guide? Yeah. Uh, if I'd say beginner, I would have to say it might be better worded as entry level. True, true. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Coach's corner vibe, minus Ron. <laughs> Ron's over there. Actually, yeah, I'll dress up. You people. And I'm done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is a fly fishing boat outfitters flying go with a bit of new music and a little bit of jam a lamb lamb. Mm -hmm. like and we, we just quite honestly want you guys to win tonight because <laughs> we hate storing all of this yes we're prizes. ready to get it out of the prizes. out of the studio everybody's ready to play okay so uh the big thing here you can see on the bottom it says four corners to win mm -hmm. four there. corners mark none any good guys in the bow <laughs> I don't know. There's a couple. There's a couple. Uh, there's no AC in the dungeon yet. <laughs> no. There's a window that's frozen shut over yeah. there. It and, is. Uh, uh, I just can't handle our, our hotness in this room. I, that's exactly what I was waiting for. Screen of death. Well, open the door. Open the door. <laughs> it's It got real hot in here real fast. Um, until Tim finds himself a better situation, like... You're going to get double Danis tonight. Double D's. This is double D's doing flying go. And uh, that's just me. So that could have been done on Guide's Corner, but it wasn't because Tim was too busy. I don't know what he was doing. All right, next call. We got four. We're going to drop four quick calls. And Timmy might as well just leave the door open because it is hot in here. Okay, we need four corners to win. So if you win, you say bingo. Put your card number, okay, and then we're going to pop up your card here, and we will double-check it. If there's a tie, we just throw in um, a tiebreaker. We have a thing here. Just throw it in. Tiebreaker on. It's really that so simple. Fly Vision Bow River, Western Green Drake, and uh, apparently this song did not want to repeat. <laughs> I was just kidding. It did. Just uh, it got hot too. Tim, you you, you uh, back? Maybe. Guess we'll find out. Well, did you turn it back on? I did. There oh, you are. Hey. Welcome back to the show, Tim. It's good to be here, guys. Good to be here. Yes. Oh, Kay. I see. Four corners. Uh, mm. Anybody called it yet? Uh, no. GFA Hopper. GFA Hopper. Not the GTA Hopper. Yeah, it's different. But the GFA different. Hopper. It's different. It is different. It's different. You're going to find that out too. Tie that on season six. Yep. All day long, you just have to get four corners and you're gonna win. Well, ish. It's, win -ish. it's really amazing how people know when flying goes on and the viewership jumps up to well over <laughs> yeah, 120 come on, guys. people. Seriously, you gotta stick around the whole time. Four corners, four for four in the center. That's not gonna work, Terry. <laughs> and Eric isn't wrong. Dana oh, does wow. enjoy. He is the master and the creator of Doors of Doom. Uh, and he no, loves Sean, watching Sean, that. Wow. Sean, I've fished with Sean and it's a Doors of Doom. Well, but you had to bring it here. Yeah, well, 
Sean is a great friend and a great supporter, <laughs> and uh, it makes me smile when I think about our days together. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, Cap- well, Captain oh, Clutch, cool. that's funny as oh, all be. I'd love it for someone to win on this one. Yeah, I know. Give us a four corners call, somebody. Oh, yeah. Keeping it real. Sculpzilla. Natural. Hmm. Oh, uh, where are we What's at? Be? What's Talk to me, folks. And the viewers. Anybody winning? Keep piling in for the flying go. But you want to stick around because we've got the uh, Rance's Gypsy King. Gypsy King. Come Maybe up. we'll play some more 1941. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> okay, next call. Strip Leech. We're oh. waiting. We're going to get... This is how we're going to get... Also say what your your call is. So say, you know, like call seven or call six. And then we know because if there's a tie, we have to go back to the fact that you had a call before the other person. It's good information to have. Yeah. Uh, also throw in the comments a thumbs up if you're digging the new Flying Goat music. It's very, uh... Right, halfway there. Let's see. <laughs> Three to go. Oh, Art's got another. Two to go. Art, what a good dude he is. All right, all right. We're Facebook friends, and uh like the guy. I like you, Art. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, the Evil Weevil, and now Dirty, Dirty Hippie, Hippie Fly. Fly. Dice Corner. It's got to be uh, gotta be soon here, guys. It's going to be like a 50-way tie when it takes us long. I know. Remember that one time I said fly code? It was like was a disaster. <laughs> All right. Come on. Where is it at? <sighs> Nobody? It really? instantly got cold in here, and I like it. It's nice, actually. Yeah. Things are so, getting right. protruding. We're going to have to fix that song so it repeats better. <laughs> um, Rocky. Rocky Fly Shop. Fly shop. Wow. We got Fly Vision, Bow River, Green Drake, Sculptzilla Natural, Rec Base, GFA Hopper, Captain Clutch, Strip Leech, Evil Weevil, which I believe is next week. No, no. the hair stone fly nymph. And uh, Dirty Hippie Fly, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Oh, 11. We're going deep into this one. Four oh, corners gets people every time. <laughs> Oh, uh, it is going to go Well, deep. Ron, you can't suck. It's just luck. It's just luck. It rhymes. Nice rhyme. That's good. That yeah. really I, rhymed. Maybe they just need the right voice to help like, them win. You never know. <laughs> All right, folks. Halfway there. Well, we're going to speed things up. Yeah. Okay, let's get this over with. Ooh. We got the voices back. There's a really weird sound coming out of my I headphones, Tim. Is it? You Did you get the too? same thing? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. What do you get? Um, what is it? It sounds like you're a chipmunk. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's time to goodness. get the folks going because let's go. this is freaking going too yeah. long. Let's get this on. We're never going to have enough fly time no. tonight, Tim. We need to tie one more All fly. Right. Hurry Come up, on. folks. Let's speed things up. <laughs> 12 doors of doom. <laughs> I have the wrong card, I think. Doors of Doom. <laughs> Minion. Oh, oh my yes, goodness. So good. Come on. Let's get this done, guys. Jeez Louise. This is a free game. And it's if you free. don't hurry up and win, we're just going to say, what do we do? Call it at 20 and say nobody's a winner? If we got all the way to 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. Too oh, many. There we go. John, come on, come on. John. Be the only one. Be John. the only one. Come on. John. John, one out of you 12. just hold on tight there. Let me see. <laughs> John, <laughs> you're no, 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 no. Oh, no, Tim. <laughs> oh, oh, my man. goodness. I've just checked. What did you do? I've just checked. Did you check what? John doesn't have a Captain Clutch sticker. Oh, John. Oh, 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 oh. That's a big ah, mistake. Ah. Oh, you're screwed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just go home now. So just... close. Shut down yeah, the laptop. That's what she said. It's not worth it. <laughs> oh, you're okay, done. I have all Gonzo. but the corners. Okay. <laughs> this isn't good. All right. This is well, what, See, as soon as we put on this amazing voice effect. Somebody wins. Everybody wins. Because it's free. Okay. Um, bingo 109 called 12. Let's Call 12. See. Nothing else. Oh, John. You should have got a sticker. Oh my goodness, he ain't getting, he ain't gonna be a winner. 
hope not. I hope you learned this lesson. Wait. I hope not. Wait. We're supposed, supposed to be, be the positive yeah. ones. It's Go. the wizard you... who's negative. Yeah, you got yeah. this. Oh, okay. All right. Look at that. He's a winner. He's a winner. Oh, my Florida. goodness. Just in time to say, you, my friend, are so freaking awesome. Yes. <laughs> I'm screwed. Okay, I don't know how to do this properly. Um, a smooth transition. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so confused. Oh, boy. You sometimes just gotta fumble your way through this stuff. <laughs> sometimes. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, there we are. We just. It doesn't sound right. No. <laughs> Not on that screen, it doesn't. Uh, oh, man. Oh, well. Good things. Let's see what happens. No clutch sticker. Oh, my goodness. Well, are good folks, good friends. And everybody in between. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a little bit of a Shazam bingo. And this guy thinks he's going to win. Ha! Add a little bit of sauce in the juice and make this thing a real contest. Walk right into my doors of doom and choose wisely, John. You can't win. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, man. He's oh, totally screwed. Huh. Or John, I don't even know what you're going to do. Pick your number wisely. Pick it. Let us know. Come on. Choose wisely. Oh, my goodness. My vote's number two. <laughs> <laughs> this Come isn't on. even about fly fishing anymore. Nope. <laughs> John's losers. <laughs> Door number one. Is that what he said? Oh man, I wouldn't have done that. First thing, that's just me. <laughs> well, oh my goodness, I oh, think I'm gonna pass out. I'm so excited to ruin John's. <laughs> John's. I, no, I've got a good feeling about this one. Oh my goodness, you got this, John. I just want to go back and erase it. Well, what we do know is he didn't pick door number two. What's behind door number two? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Oh, no stickers for you. No consolation. And the sticker could have been a Captain Clutch. Oh, but no, John nope. got greedy. He did. And he chose door number one. He did. And you know what that means. John. John. The moment has come. John, the time has come to reveal. What is behind door number one? I will choose to open the door for you. Door number one. Oh. You did it! Oh, you failed. Oh. Our vision for it is for people to come out here to enjoy the spot and to find peace, I guess. Like, um, a lot of people ask us if we're gonna get Wi-Fi out here, and we're like, no, like, this is a place to disconnect and reconnect with your family and with yourself and just find quiet. Well, if that wasn't it. the most fun you've had all <sighs> freaking week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Miller. Oh. That was very good. Good That's choice. a lot of stuff that you won. That's a lot of and stuff. And you didn't even need to spend 50 bucks on a Doors of Doom. But if you want to uh, go buy one, we'll put it in with your winning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whiz goes down. Yes. It's a sad day at TNL. 
It was time. Wiz goes down. It was time. It was time. It was time. He needed to go. He he took it to third period uh, yeah. before Christmas, and that's why. Uh, that's why. That's why it is what it is. So let me. Got something to show us. Oh yeah. Uh, these are not giveaways. It's just from uh But we're gonna go back to those raffle tickets we talked about. And I wanna show you guys my three favorite products happening right now at Rocky Mount Flesh Hub from our friends at Fish Pond. Well, you've might have heard of the taco bag. Mm -hmm. I believe you have one. I have one. Well, this is the burrito waiter bag. And so yes. why this is super cool is because um you can step into this bag and then step out of your gear, like your boots and your waders, and then you just wrap them up and it goes home. You don't have to step out in the gravel and then get your booties in the gravel and then your booties have rocks on them and they turn them inside out and it's just kind of gross like that. And sometimes what we do is we just have little pieces of carpet uh, at our truck. Uh, but the burrito bag is from our friends at Fish Pond. And uh, this is the perfect bag for your marinated waders and Boots covered in river guac. Oh, guac. 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 Also known as <clears throat> Didymo. <laughs> Didymo. Only on the bow do you find Didymo. Uh, another really cool thing um, is because the fish pond net uh, have multiples of those, as does Tim. Um, their rubber net kit. Okay, yeah. we do want to go over this uh, on a future episode about how to rebag your net. So this is yep. also known as a bag. Uh, super easy to do, and this is 32 bucks. So uh, the fish pond nets are expensive at the two to $300 range, but I tell you they are bulletproof. I've had clients step on them, smash them. I've left them on the river, found them a day <laughs> later, yeah. and they are still great. But what does happen in about two or three years is that the sun will, or you get things hooked on them or whatever, and you could go in and you can make a quick fix with a zip tie, which is we'll show you too. But uh, it's really cool. Just you throw on a new uh, bag on your net, and it's as good as new. And trust me, I did uh, two of my boat nets last year, and it felt like brand new yeah it feels so good. Yeah, like so brand new net. Uh, yeah, trendy thing at uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. So. Uh, what I want to tell you before I show you the last thing is that there's going to be three VIPs tonight. Uh, the first, so how do you cash in on your VIP? So you've got those raffle tickets in your kits if you bought a kit. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to rockymountflyshop.net. Uh, Colin has activated your number, not everybody, but three of the people. Um, and one of your numbers is good for 40 percent off Woo. whatever you want to buy yeah. at rocky mountain fly shop load That's up your big. cart and then in the like do you have a code or whatever you type in your code um and then it's it's activated for 40 percent, and then the other two get uh 20 off um so yeah go load up your cart and see if your vip code works uh, so for three people tonight that code will work how do you get a vip code you just <clears throat> that only comes in a kit Yep. Uh, so for those are for the people and we appreciate that bought a kit help keep the show moving along moving along okay so this one here is the fish bond uh, I don't know what it's called but it's a it's a hip pack and so I'm a huge fan a lot of people wear vests I'm a huge fan of a hip pack and to be truly transparent I have not worn this one yet I have uh, worn a lot of Orvis hip packs uh, but as I reviewed this one, it has the ability to slide on the belt. Mm. And why is that really cool? Because I've been wanting a hip pack to slide to my back. So I wear in guiding and fishing, I wear a hip pack and then I wear a backpack because I have to carry people's lunches and food and, and like a pack meal. Sherpa. Uh, but the hip pack is super cool because it has the ability to just slide around and it slides to your back and it's out of your way. Now, this one isn't the waterproof. This is not a waterproof one, um, but it does very well with water. The other cool thing on the front of this is this front pouch is is uh, magnetic. magnetic. Nice. And Colin testifies <clears throat> that he has jammed this full of 
things. We don't know what things. And he says that this magnet is impressively strong and he has never had a problem with it. Um, it's got these little tags here, which are good for like your uh, mitten clamps, which are incredible. It's got a nice, this is a really sturdy, uh, you know, like the cheap ones that usually come on them. That thing's yeah. good. And it kind of tucks out of the way so you're not having a problem. So it works like over your shoulder, hip pack goes around here. So uh, very good. There it is. That is my three favorite fish pond products right now at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. And I'm sure I'm going to have about 30 more uh, throughout <laughs> the year. Um, As always. The other thing Colin was saying was, and I don't know how it works, is that this. Uh, I believe it's like a quick disconnect. And then this bag comes off the belt. You can buy mm. the belt separately, too. I saw there. Uh, but this quick connect comes off and then you just stick it in your boat. Hmm. That's lit. So you're not like trying to like take the belt out of the way. You just quick clip and you got yourself a little bit of a boat bag. Nice. Very good gear from Fish Pond. And Love their those, stuff. Those aren't giveaways, but <clears throat> those are just something real cool. So where do you put in your code? Uh, upon checkout, you're just going to say like... Enter a code or coupon code, I believe. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop can uh, let us know for sure. You're not going to know uh, unless you pull up your card the, and belt, try. the belt has their net holder in it too. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Correct. Yeah. And it's called the Fish Pond Switchback. So <clears throat> um, if I had a downfall about it, in my opinion, it would be that it's not uh, waterproof. And why, why does that matter? Uh, because when you cross the river often, like I find it's, you know, gets wet. But having said that, oftentimes I leave my zipper open and cross the <laughs> yeah, river and anyways. I fill my <laughs> hip out I've multiple times. So many times. Um, Me yeah. too. So Fish Pond is solid stuff, but the company is epic. And there's a lot of really high end companies out there. Um, culture's tainted. And that's one thing Fish Pond isn't. And I speak wholeheartedly and i won't get into the other people but uh yeah keep the good ones close uh so the code we're talking about is nathaniel um since you're at if4 you probably aren't at home with your uh vip ticket just show the back of this mm -hmm. there's a couple different like they're not all gonna look like that come on now just, uh, yeah, there's, anyways, there's a number on the front. And, no, oh, don't show the number. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Covered it up. Uh, how are they without the shoulder pack? It has the shoulder. I wouldn't wear it with just the fanny. Uh, that's just going to lean and annoy your hip. Mm -hmm. um, but it does have sort of that sling on there. And then it's great. And I wear the sling. I have an Orvis pack right now. And I wear the sling. And I got a backpack and it is, trust me, I've tried everything and I am a gear whore. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. And I, for the past five years, got to do a lot of product testing with Orvis. And this, this idea of a hip pack with a strap is definitely awesome. <coughs> Yanni. Yeah. It saves, Yanni, go saves the hip. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially um, when you have a, ba a backpack on top of it, it just holds everything tight to you. It's nice. Yeah, open zippers are not waterproof. That's a fact. No. Uh, but it's going to do a good job. And like I said, I have the waterproof one, and I leave the zipper open. And um, like Terry said, it's not waterproof. It's not. No. Nope. Okay, so we've got a fly to tie. I think we do. we've done all of the logistical things. And the man, there's a lot of stuff we packed in here today. Oh, it's a busy day. Um, what else to do? That's okay. It's good stuff. That's okay. We got the Rance's Gypsy King uh, foam. And this thing, trust me, guys, is a little tricky in the front. You're just getting a lot of materials together. Um, but practice this, and that's why you have enough material to tie this up to five times, depending how you do. And tie it a lot because this one is something you're going to want to try next summer. And I know yeah. a lot of people last year had a lot of luck with some of the foam that we tied, but this one will be new to a lot of you. And I encourage you. Definitely want to give this one a go. To tie it. And that's what she looks like right there. Very, uh, very good. Very buggy. 
Um, originally actually a crane fly pattern, kind of like we said, but this one has been adopted into fishing for stone flies or anything um, that's that similar size and buggy. But yeah, there is quite a bit going on in this fly and unfortunately it all kind of comes together in one spot where you can see that hackle going around. Most of the, pro uh, the things we're tying are gonna all tie in right there. So stick with me on this one. We are, we're not in a hurry, but we are gonna keep it moving. If you need me to slow down or stop, give me an SOS and I will, uh, I will pause up for you for a second, okay? All right, I'm gonna switch over mics here. It's gonna take you guys a few seconds to get used to the different mics, so just hold <laughs> tight. <laughs> just be patient. So clear your desk of all the other things you just had on there. Let's get over to our other package. That's got our, it's gonna look just like this. Oh, I show it here, Never mind. Rance of Gypsy King. Okay, so we're gonna be tying this on a size 10. This is a Daiichi 1280 hook. Um, <clears throat> the thread we're gonna be using for this one, like we said before, we're gonna go with something a little heavier because we are tying with foam and every time we tie with foam, the risk is cutting it and we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna use something a little heavier. So in that six aught range, or um, as you know, I prefer my UTC. I'm gonna be a UTC 140 in black. Uh, go ahead and prepare uh, your material. So like as before, you'll see you got your hooks are separately packaged from um, two other packages you have there with your materials. So there is quite a few materials in this one, um, but the first thing we need to do is get our hook in the vise and then we're gonna um, kind of plug away at the first couple things. And uh, the, the techniques in this one are actually quite simple as far as the, the technique basis goes. You just gotta stick step by step with me and uh, and make sure we don't miss something and we'll get through this one. It's gonna be worth it because once you get through it, you're gonna realize that it ain't that bad and you're gonna wanna tie a bunch more of them. Get that nice and level. Okay, so I'm gonna go over, grab my black UTC 140. Like you see here, I'm gonna start this just behind the eye and I'm gonna put a nice thread base down. Snag out that, cut that out and we're just gonna, what's that? Oh, sorry. Gotta turn that around. There we go. Better? Yeah. Hear me a little better? <clears throat> sorry, guys. This little mic moves around a bit. I'm gonna take thread wraps basically all the way down to the back there. Okay, and I'm gonna come back to midway on the hook. Okay. Uh, now let's go into our kits here and let's find, you're gonna have some brass colored. So if you don't have purple legs, grab black legs, grab white legs. Uh, white legs, you can bar them. You can get creative with your legs. Uh, don't let a color of something deter you from tying a fly. Definitely not. Um, because you just got to take a marker to it, and you've got whatever color you want. Yeah, exactly. Don't get discouraged by that piece at all. So first thing we're going to grab here, guys, we have this um, copper wire here. Okay, this, is, uh, this will be a size small <clears throat> or, or a brassy size. We're going to cut off a piece of that. You know what scissors to use. Dana scissors for sale at RockyMountFlyShop.net. <laughs> $5.99. Oh, uh, worth every it's penny. A it's a true story. <laughs> it is a true story. That's what's funny about it. Um, I'm just going to place that wire against the hook shank. We're going to start it about midway on the hook. We're not too worried about building a, the proper taper or a poor one here because we're going to put a bunch of big bulky material over this. But I'm going to take this all the way back to basically if I were to leave my thread hanging, it's going to hang right at that barb. Okay. Just before the it tips off and goes um, down the fly. Okay. Now I'm going to bring just a couple, making sure that that wire is secured right to that point there and I'll leave it hanging. Um, <clears throat> now the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna see here, this is a, literally a mitt full of um, peacock hurl. You are gonna use a ton of it. So um, go ahead and grab yourself a real good chunk. So you wanna be somewhere in that, um, that range of probably 10 or 12 pieces of it. I know that seems like a lot, but when I show you how we tie this in, you'll kind of understand why. So you've got a ton of it there. So I'm just gonna grab like a big stack of it like this. There is a lot of sh short ones in there, so just kind of place them over your waste basket or whatever and get some of those out. Um, and then we're gonna kind of work it down so we have probably, like I said, in that range of 10 to 12. Now you see at one end, this is the butts where it would attach to the feather. At the other end is our tips. Now the tips are actually gonna be quite fragile. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna find a spot where I kind of have them all evened out and I'm gonna, or they're all similar length when I cut them here. So, and I'm not just gonna trim them like that. So I've got a nice flat, even, even piece to tie in. <clears throat> and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tie that in right on top of the hook. Make sure those butts are good and secured. 
slide my thread back all the way to where I had left it. And now from this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... A, just a... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's right. What were you going to say? No, it's just another comment about the staples. Um, it's super easy to get the staples out of the bags. We've we talked about this before. Um, yeah, we'll show you after. Yeah, I can show you once we're done this. Okay. So now we got this big mess of this stuff. What I want you to do is I'll bring your hands down um, near the stems and start twisting. Okay, we want to twist this up. We're going to basically make a rope out of it. I'm going to advance that thread forward. Okay, I'm just going to put a quick little half hitch in here just to save my work. And I'm going to be able to set my bobbin out of the way. So I'm going to twist this up. I'm going to create a bit of a rope with it. Okay, now I'm going to start is wrapping this hurl forward on the hook. Okay, now you're going to get to a point where you realize probably that the wraps that you put into it, um, like when we twisted it, that it did, like for me now, I can see they're back to straight because I didn't twist all the way enough. So I'm going to twist them again. You want to make sure this is nice and roped up. And we're going to continue <laughs> to take this. A yeah, comment is, um, and it really works well in a Norvice, is you can spin the peacock curl on the thread. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of keeps it all together too. It does. It's a great point. So I'm going to bring my hurl till I get to right behind the eye. I'm going to lift it straight up. I'm going to secure it with a wrap behind. Take that wrap in front. Go back behind again. Now this stuff is notorious for getting getting free. So make sure it's nice and secure. So a question about <clears throat> like wrapping the thread together with the peacock curl. Um, it does make it stronger. But what we also have coming from the behind is the old brassy wire which will strap it all down strap it in strap it on yep that's the reason for that wire back there guys we're gonna <clears throat> like we did with the other fly we're gonna wrap in that same direction now let's go with some nice segmenting wraps up the body so that right there is gonna help like it takes away the need to wrap it on your thread yeah we're gonna take this right up to just behind the eye as well and secure it and that's really exactly what that's there for. That's just there to secure and to give strength to that kind of fragile peacock curl. Because the peacock is beautiful and, and it does so good at imitating a lot of things and gives lots of movement in the water. But it is a fragile material. Uh, olive chenille. You could use chenille, but like the comment yeah. said earlier, peacock is magic. And we looked at doing this... Um, couple years ago yeah we're trying to get there's like synthetic peacock like i think we have some on there yeah somewhere actually uh, I mean, it's still here if i put it away but yeah yeah i did put it away anyways it's there's just something magical about peacock hurl yeah it's, it's uh straight from nature very uh very realistic in what we try to do with it okay so things are gonna get a little a little dicey here start making some movements towards our foam Okay, so you're gonna go into your other package. So uh, this is what I'm gonna show you how I how I open this, okay? So when you have a staple in this package like this, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna brace at the back end, I'm gonna pull the plastic down and it pops that side out. All I'm gonna do is then switch hands, do the same thing, push the plastic out of the way, and it pops out, okay? That's a technique for getting those staples out. Risk versus reward, we gotta secure everything in there. So go ahead and pull out your foam. So this is some two mil foam. It's going to be cut roughly hook gap and width, but this is a little wide, so I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. So I'm going to take enough off that I have basically that hook gap and width is going to be what the foam is. And I can cut myself. So that's what I did. I just, you can see how I trimmed that down. So it's a little thinner now. Test it again. That's pretty much perfect. Um, and then for a length, I'm just going to do a general here. So I'm going to hang it off the back a bit, hang it off the front a little bit, and then I will trim it like so, okay? And then what I do on the back end of this, so on the very back of the fly, I'm just gonna cut a point into it. So it looks just like this, okay? Super simple, not doing any type of real fancy stuff. Now, what I need to do with my thread here, guys, is I'm gonna take this thread. Um, now imagine you can't see what's on the underside of this fly, the fish can't. So I'm gonna take a cross wrap up on top of the hurl, kind of like we would if we were wrapping foam back so that I'm about a quarter of the way back down the fly. OK, 
okay? Try to find that spot that's roughly a quarter. Move it one more time. You can put wraps over that hurl, and honestly, it's not even visible, so it's not a big deal. Um, and this is where we're going to do our major tying in. We're going to tie a lot of stuff in right here. So we'll start with the foam. I've got the pointy piece of the foam pointed back down the fly. I'm going to hang that just beyond the back bend of the hook. Okay. I'm going to place it nice and firm. Take my thread up and over, nice and square on that foam. Take my first wrap, start to squeeze just a little bit. Take my second wrap, squeeze a little harder, and I like to pinch right where I put the wrap, pinch down, and then pull down. Then one more wrap. Okay, so on my third wrap is my tightest wrap. I should have it sitting right up on top, like so. Then I wanna pull this back and take a couple wraps underneath. That should help that foam from not wanting to spin around the hook if we take a couple wraps there, okay? So now we've got that, I'll take maybe one or two more. Now what I also wanna do is I wanna now, you can see my spacing here, I'm gonna take a couple of wraps and pinch just a little bit more of that foam down so I make that, that space in there just a little bit wider because I'm gonna be tying in quite a few things right here and it also will help secure that foam. So if you look at it from the top now, you can see I just, I just put a little bit of extra thread wraps down in that one spot. That's gonna help keep everything where I want it to be and help for spacing when I tie everything else in. So the first thing we're gonna go to is we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to our crystal flash, which you also have an abundance of. I would say go ahead and grab yourself four of those long pieces roughly four or five, Don't not super precise on this, but grab four or five of them. I'm basically gonna grab them like so. I'm gonna fold them roughly in half. They're nice and long, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna find that loop there. Okay, that loop, I'm just gonna cut. So I'm doubling up, okay? Now I'm gonna find the midway point on all of those flash again, which I've now doubled to create this. I'm gonna wrap it around my thread Okay, kind of at that halfway between. I'm gonna bring my thread up, bring this down vertical, cinch it on there, and then take a couple thread wraps to secure it in place. And uh, don't bother trimming it quite yet because we wanna leave it nice and long so it just kind of hangs back out of the way, okay? That's our crystal flash. Uh, next thing we're gonna tie in, we're gonna go ahead and tie in our legs. So this fly ties in legs paired together. Okay, so you, we have them for you in the kit. They're still stuck together. If they're not stuck together and you're using out something else from home, it's fine. Just make sure you're tying two in each side. So I'm gonna start by tying these bad boys in here. So I'm just gonna place them against the foam and just take a couple of loose wraps, let the weight of the bobbin hang. And then I can come in here and do this. You can see I can still move them around to where I want them to go. Um, in theory, we would like the front ones to be pointed slightly down and the back ones slightly up. If you, can, uh, if you can get that, awesome. If not, not the biggest deal. Then take a couple more wraps to kind of secure, make sure that's tighter. And now we're gonna go grab another set of two. We're gonna do the same thing on the near side of the fly to yourself or to me. So legs come in many different shapes and sizes. And colors and <laughs> textures, yep. You notice these are a little more round. Round, yep. So you, sometimes they're um, like a silly leg. Some people like to use silly legs. Silly legs are actually more designed for streamers instead of like flash and such. But rubber legs often come in um, small, medium, and large. And depending on the pattern you want or the color choice, this pattern calls for a, a brown, or in this case, it's a little tinge of purple, but um, brown, medium sized rubber legs. Let's leave those as they are. Let's not separate them or do anything like that quite yet. Take a couple of thread wraps, make sure those are kind of secured now. We'll still be able to maneuver them a bit even later, but we like to keep them fairly secure for now. Now, what everybody's been waiting for, and what you love the most, we're gonna get out our deer hair. hair. The hair. Everybody's scared of hair, hair, but hopefully through the season and tying hair and, and being busy on the vice with me, I'll show you some techniques and tricks that'll help you lose your fear of trimming hair, because this is not so bad. Okay, so we're gonna grab uh, a pinch here. I, I'd like to say like a half a pencil width or three quarters of a pencil width worth of hair. Nothing too, too crazy. Um, we're not overdoing it in the hair department. This is just meant to look like a wing, okay? So I'm gonna pull that away from uh, that leather that's holding it together on the hide and I'm gonna go ahead in here and trim that out, okay? Now what I'm left with is this. I'm gonna pinch the tips and I'm gonna come in here and just kind of flick all this stuff, try to get the You'll notice there's fluff in there. It's like under fur. We want to try to get all that out. If you've got a comb or a brush, you can use that too. 
but I'm just generally getting as much out as I can. Now I'm going to come back and look at my tips. This is where we got to get to another tool we haven't used yet, which is, a, as Dana would call it, a deer, a deer stacker. stacker. But it's actually, in fact, a hair stacker. This one from our friends at Shore Fishing. Very nice. This is the large size. I like using a little bit larger one with this longer hair. And I'm going to get the tips of that hair to go inside my hair stacker. If you don't have a hair stacker, you can actually do this. I'll show you real quick. I'm going to leave that in there for a moment. If I didn't have a hair stacker, what would I do? So I'm going to come in here and grab another pinch off of here. Kind of repeat the process that I just showed you. Where I get all that under fuzz out. Then what I would do is I would kind of loosely hold it in my fingers like so. And I would come to my palm. Okay. And I'm just going to do this nice and light. And I'm allowing some of those to slip and to come back into alignment. As you can see there, outside of maybe two of them, they all lined up to each other. Okay, and that's definitely close enough to tie into this fly. So just a cool technique where you can just do this, you tap it on your hand, loosen with these fingers, and allow the hair to kind of stack itself until loosen and to sit where you want to be. And at the end, you got your hair basically perfectly stacked. So kind of a, a neat trick if you don't have a hair stacker, you can do. If you've got a hair stacker, give it a couple of rappy tap taps on your desk. Let me see if this, uh, sometimes this is trying to show the bigger picture here. Ah, the bigger picture. Yes, yes. Oh, look at you go. Very nice. So with the hair stacker, because I know I put the hair in in this direction, the tips are down here. Tips are going to go back down the fly. So I'm going to pull the base off. The hair should stay on the other side like so. Now I can see it all sitting like so, it's sitting right in there. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to reach and I'm going to grab this and pull that out. So the butts are back here. I'm going to give it another little flick, make sure I got all that loose stuff out of there. And now it's important that I keep everything together at this point. I've got this far, so now it's important to make sure I keep the tips stacked um, and don't let them slip out. So now I'm gonna approach this on the fly. I know that I want this to be roughly counterattack. <laughs> Very good. Very nice, I like that, didn't it? Um, I want that hair to extend just beyond the back of that foam. So now I'm gonna switch hands because I've got my measurement. I'm gonna switch hands, saving my mark on the hair. Okay, I'm gonna come in here hold with tight, scissors. Hold tight, we got a sauce. We got a sauce. All Eric right. Has thrown out the sauce while I was fancy cameraman. Hold on to that hair, guys. Don't lose the tips fancy wherever you do it. Always SOS if you need a hand. You SOS. We take a pause. Well, let us know why. If you like that third camera angle, just uh, twenty more. Captain Clutch stickers, and we could get, <laughs> we could get another get another camera. Uh, wish, uh, I you, wish we could you? show behind the uh, behind the scenes. If you ever want to come to the studio, folks, it is open house. It is, um, and hopefully, no more sneaking into the garage. We can get a bigger one going soon once I figure out. See, and we moved on, and now <laughs> we're drinking. <laughs> Fresca. Unfortunately, Tim doesn't I'm have home today. <laughs> a ride home. That's good. It's good stuff. Kind of tastes like a medito. All right. Eric says we're good to go. Let's do it. So hopefully you've still held that hair where you needed to be. So I'm going to re-show you that measurement quick. Switch hands. Measure just beyond the foam. Switch hands again, saving that spot. And now I'm going to come in here with my scissors. <clears throat> making a mess of my desk, but I want to be able to show you this. Ooh, sh show you this a little, a little <laughs> tell me some more good news is that from your new crown <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the fresca okay i'm gonna cut the hair right here with just a little space in front of my fingers okay so i got these butts now i'm gonna lay the butts right in the middle of that tie-in point i'm gonna take one thread wrap okay start to put some pressure you're gonna see it start to flare there see that hair flaring and then i'm gonna start to take a second wrap and then a third wrap, and you see how it flared up. And now I'm going to take some wraps through the butts of the hair. That's going to secure well, it down. Well, like Mr. Tro Maharishi said, I hate hair. <laughs> Just like that, guys. So how you see, we could have come in after and trimmed out all the, the extra hair that was out hanging off the front if we didn't trim it. But this is really nice and quite clean. And um, do you ever? Can you ever, like, wax it? Or do you have to trim it? I think it's a trim situation. Or Never. can you cauterize it? You could cauterize it off if you tried not to burn your foam. Well, 
there's just these things, guys, especially with deer hair. I like to show you many kind of ways of working with it because the better you get in more facets, you'll find in certain flies. You just want to do things certain ways because it makes it a little bit easier for you. Okay. We're actually getting close here, guys. We're doing really good. So I'm going to put a few more thread wraps, kind of creating that space that we had created before. Okay. Because now comes our hackle. Okay. So you're going to have a nice saddle hackle piece in your kit, or if you're at home, um, if you're tying, we're just using a grizzly hackle. This is a um, a saddle hackle, but if you've got saddle, a cape. Saddle, why is the difference? And can you show us beside you with the shore? Yeah, actually I can. Fancy that. So the difference between a saddle hackle. So this is a, this is a, this is from shore. Or shore makes this, sorry. Um, show you that one up there. So that is a genetic yeah, genetic rooster mini pack. So mini pack. <clears throat> so and basically, they've taken a piece of a cape off and given it to you because the capes are are quite expensive okay. if you're buying the whole thing. What's the price of those? Because I think the price is very fair. This is very fair. This is fifteen bucks, which is crazy. Because <laughs> I mean, you could spend two hundred dollars. I have many capes actually that are over two hundred dollars, and like that's a big investment to to make. So if you can do this, you still tie a ton of flies out of that. Um, these are more uh, a cape style. So what it means as a cape. It just comes from a different place on the chicken. Um, but a cape has normally a little bit shorter feathers, but very, very consistent. So you'll have a good set, like we say it's a size 12 hackle because we, we've tested the length of the, uh, the hackle fibers and it'll be very consistent. Um, then we have what this is here that's in your kits. And this is a, um, this is what they call a saddle. Okay, so it comes from a little different place. What's the advantage of this is the feather is much longer um, so easier to work with. So you don't need hackle pliers most of the time. You get many flies out of one feather, um, but there is more inconsistency in the sizing. So if you look down it, you can see it starts quite big. So if I bend that, it starts quite big. It gets more appropriate sized mid feather, and then it gets quite small at the end. So more inconsistency in the feather, but the nice part is it's this big long feather that's easy to work with, okay? Um, but yes, at some point in your life, maybe you invest in an expensive cape, but don't do it right off the start. Try some of this first with these little uh, mini cape packs. And they're, I mean, for 15 bucks, you're, that's laughing. That's awesome. <coughs> Rocket Mountain Fly Shop done that. Did anybody, did anybody get their VIP discount? I need to know. Asking for a friend. Yeah, it would be nice to know. Okay, guys, let's get this hackle tied in. So as we've talked about before, there's an underside to a hackle and there's a top side. Top side is always shiny underside is dull and it'll be a bit of a curve so the underside is always cur is the underside of the curve and the uh the top side is always the top side so i showed you how um it has different lengths so if i pull this down on the fly i can see how big those fibers are going to be hanging down and i want it to be roughly the hook gap maybe a little bit more so i'm going to come into this feather just a little ways because i i like the size that the it is right here I'm going to show you a little preparation. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. I'll keep it right here. So preparing a hackle for tie-in. If you do this, it'll help you. You're going to cut a little wedge in this direction. And what this does is it allows you to tie in. If I can get that. It's hard to hold still. Bet you Dana scissors would cut that so fine. <laughs> Don't think they would. But you can see here how I've left a few shorter barbs on there. And when I go to tie it in, I'm going to make sure my thread goes into those barbs and it does better to hold that slippery stem um, in place. So I'm going to turn this so that the underside of the feathers pointed back it down It literally the becomes like a barb. Yeah, right? Wow. See Look at the barbs right there. You can't really dance. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to secure this right up against the hair because I'm going to have room for a few wraps in here right in those barbs that I left myself. Make sure I get a few thread wraps, secure that stem in place. I'll just trim, I'll trim out that stem real quick. And now what I want to achieve is I want to achieve roughly four wraps, three to four wraps with this um, hackle in the space I left myself. So let's go with one, one full complete one. And then you want to keep each additional wrap in front of the last one. That's two, that's three, we'll go one more. 
And if you're gonna, if you're planning to fish this in a little bit rougher water, you might add more. So you might go a little bit uh, higher on the count of wrap because you'd be in a little bit heavier water. Now it's important that I get my thread behind that hackle and then in front of it, just like we do with most materials. That's how we're gonna secure this in place. And do your best not to trap any if you can when you're trying to tie this in. I'm gonna do it twice. So I'm gonna go behind it again and then in front of it. And try to pull back those hackle fibers. There's always gonna be a few that go different directions and that's okay, we can fix that too. And then just go in there and trim out the hackle. Get it out of the way. Again, try not to cut too many of the other ones. Set that aside because you're going to get a couple more out of that. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is while I'm here, I'm quickly just going to advance that thread right forward to the eye. Okay. Now I'm going to see I've got a few little barbs that kind of went out on their own. Be careful not to trim your thread, but trim those out of the way. And now that my thread's right at the eye of the hook, I'm just going to lay that foam back down. Try to keep those legs out of the way. Lay the foam back down. And right where it sits, I'm gonna put one good wrap, nice and square on the foam. Squeeze down, do another second, third, squeeze tight. And that's created a nice little ball right on top of the head, okay? And then I'm gonna reach out in front of that just a couple of millimeters or so and trim that foam off square. So our head looks wow. like this. Okay, so really easy design of the head. It's not wanting to fall apart like your quick tie. <laughs> Don't watch the quick ties. I'm not, I'm playing video games. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to grab, just because there's a lot going on here with all the legs and where I don't want everything kind of be in the just way. Just a side note, um, if anybody wants to see me beat Tim in the game of Street Fighter 2. It won't happen. You just let me know. We'll do that before the wins. During just credits. one game. Credits. Just one credits. <laughs> right, at the end. The credits. right at the end of the wins. That's right. good. I'm in. If all you guys right. want to see that, just <laughs> put a number seven in the comments. Yeah. Tough to hold everything back and get a whip finish in. You know I love my half hitch tool which is just anything with a little bit of hole in the end. You could use this. Troy Tracy use, uh, is out. We appreciate you, you, and you are awesome. See you later, pal. This is I, just I like as, you uh, too. A whip finish tool has the same thing on it. <laughs> I'm going to lay this on my thread, wrap around it twice. I'm going to slide that up to the eye, let it slide off my tool. Do it one more time. It's a great knot. It's nice and secure. I can go ahead and trim my thread out. We're getting a lot of votes for Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There we go, guys. Now all I got to do is a little bit of trimming. So I'm going to come in here first to my um, flash. I'm going to gather it all up together. I'm going to trim it just back behind that foam. Don't cut your legs or the hair. There we go. Set that aside. Um, now I'm going to trim my legs. So I want these legs. It doesn't. It's a hard thing to to really know when you make your first cut. Um, but I want the front ones to be a little shorter than the than the back ones. So I'm just going to pinch them together, bring them out in front, kind of just gauge even if I'm wrong the first time, but I like that. I like that size. Um, and then the back ones, I'm going to bring them back together and they want to be cut just behind the back of the foam. And now if you look at them, I'm going to just take a little more off the front ones, short them up just a smidge. You can see the front ones are just slightly shorter than the back ones. And then I want to come in here and I want to separate those legs. We're trying to give the illusion of double legs. This is the old uh, crane fly larva thing. So if you pull on them, they'll double those, uh, the double up legs will pull apart. Make sure you split them back all the way to the body of the fly on all sides. And once you get that last one pulled apart, there we go. Give a good little <laughs> top view of it. Look how that looks, guys. That wow. is a pretty sexy looking little fly. How'd you get those ones to bend backwards? When you're good, you're good, Dane. Uh, good tip by Trout. Why do I feel like there's a weird echo? <laughs> you can always cut them shorter the second time. That's true. Well, yeah. also, uh, when it's in your fly box and you go to fish it and you don't like the size of it. Yep. You can trim them back if you want some more. Uh, a lot of time I'll do that with like uh, flies, foam flies that have hackle. Sometimes I'm like, this hackle's massive and I'll just cut it down. Meaning that I want the fly to sit a little lower on in the water. water so. Uh, but you can't add that stuff back on, so that's a great tip to remember. Uh, you can tie a knot in the back leg, that is yep. for sure. That would those ones are just hanging back there. Hanging back? You should try to cauterize a little bit and see if you can bend them, and then they, like, glue together. <laughs> you're, you're smoking it. I'm not ruining this fly. 
You tie one and then you try it. <laughs> yeah. That's, we all have our roles. Too. <laughs> That's the fly, right. guys. Rance's that Gypsy is King. Rance's Gypsy King. That's a gooder. Um, walk through some of those materials there because yeah. there's a few other ones that are kind of cool as well. Yeah. So we didn't go through some of the deer hair options we had here, but these are some more of the ones you can get at Rock Mountain Fly Shop. So this guy here, uh, natural deer body hair. Oh, deer, up deer here, sorry. A like row, that one. Oh. Row deer body. Row deer. Really nice. Uh, very cool to work with. We got just some regular deer body. Safer yeah, stimulators, but, so but perfect for this. To think about the fact that they sourced hair from a deer that would be best for stimulators pretty cool that is unique and uh, that stuff is sourced and made in canada yes it is and this guy here is another deer hair but this is a body strip like this is crazy that'll last you forever i think it's 20 bucks yeah 23 yeah. bucks that is awesome great deer body hair good for just about well I, it's exactly what we used here perfect for that stuff uh, they got this other kind of cool one this is a white reindeer works a lot like uh elk, elk hair, hair. yeah it's kind of like I think, because I haven't used it or fished it, but I think it's like a translucent-ish like, uh, like hair like we'd put on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe it kind of gives that insect translucent appearance to it, yeah. Or it's just white. Just make uh, a post out of it, whatever you want. Yeah. It's kind of a cool one. Um, you saw us use the different color pheasant tail. Also, you can get this stuff is awesome. Is really long, so this is uh, this and that's, strong that's peacock. That's great stuff to work with. Like, not all hurl is created equal no. or sourced equal, but their their hurl's good, really good. Like yeah. Tim talked about how he meant to say brittle, but you said yeah. what did I say? Feeble or something stupid? No, I was trying said, to say. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Yeah, that's weird. One of those things. Yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, that stuff is part of the. You should switch your microphones. And make my day. And uh, there we are, back. Oh man, you just you just made everybody's heart <laughs> sing. So much better. Oh, it feels yes. warmer in here now that uh, Mr. Struthers. Mr. Struthers great chat up, today. You yeah. have a great week, and we'll chat soon. Yes, we um, but guys, we're about to get into the winds, and I know that we have gone on and beyond uh, what we're supposed to do. It's but we're gonna do normal. our winds, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win uh, at Street, Fighter Street Fighter Two. It's Street Fighter Two is possible. coming up right before the credits. We don't. We should have credits. That's another thing. Right yeah, that's a good Dana one. Yeah. Make credits. Credits. Free time next week, Monday. Dana, Monday. Make Monday's the day. <laughs> make credits. So is this Monday. <laughs> credits. But it wasn't. And but it is. that's about how it goes. That's all right. right. Yeah, so what's your win? You're always first, Tim. Why would we begin with me? I don't know. Uh, this part of the show is the best part of the show because you and me and Tim, uh, we're going to hang out for another 10 or 15 minutes, depending uh, how long you guys are here and if you're here for the winning and the, the, the winning yourself and the tying and whatever uh you can leave uh, but i encourage you to stick around because this is why this show is so special because the tnl fam uh we have a chance to just chat communicate and share what we call wins meaning what's important now what is important now super special part of the show yeah and we will go through all of your wins, which is the fun part, because you will read them back to you guys. You all get to hear them. And something I told Dana this week, um, I was like, my new favorite thing is I, next day, because we're in it, we're doing this, we're and not that we're not engaged, but you don't always get the nuances of everything. But I go back the next day and I listen to the wins, um, just this end. And I love it. Just uh, It's an encouraging thing to hear from all of you what's going on in your lives, hear what's going on in our lives, and it's, it's brilliant. So, um, but I'll go first, because I always do. You always do. I always do. Um, so my win for the week, um, very much correlated to you guys in the show, but you know, um, in fly tying and in my career of fly tying, there's always ebbs and flows. There's a times where you're really excited to do it, sometimes you're not super excited to do it, um, and it kind of comes and goes. But what I love about Thursday Night Live is it does force me back onto the vice, and I've spent a lot of time tying again this year in the last couple weeks, and I'm like, I'm so back in love with it. I'm just like 
I'm you know, chomping at the bit for next week. I'm looking at the poster, looking at the next flies coming up, and I just get excited because I'm, I am passionate about fly tying. I love doing it. Um, and if it wasn't for this show, I don't know how much I would do because this is just a way that I get to help others learn it, and that's special for me. So big thanks to the show because it's you guys are my win. You bring me here, you bring us here, and just more time hanging out, being silly. Fantastic, and oftentimes... Um, Thursdays are a lot of people's wins, so that's pretty cool for us Huge. because um, we just get to be a part of it all. And uh, <coughs> yeah, like Trout said, you do a great job tying with everything that's going on. You is multi talented. You should yeah. see what he's doing Thanks, with Trout. his feet <laughs> right now. A little cross legged. I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't chew my toenails, too. Well, if your legs are as long as Dalsum on Street Fighter 2. Oh, you're then, just so uh, excited about the Street Fighter. Okay, <laughs> so win of the week was uh, probably a couple. Like, uh, Mr. Craig Jones popped up into town on Saturday, so I got to visit with him. It's always cool when we get to meet visit with you guys so uh, that's why the IF4 is so fun because uh, we all gotta hang out and just kind of let our hair down we have any um, and, but probably the biggest win is yesterday uh, me and Aaron uh, who's not here because he's working <coughs> we got to climb another mountain uh, this one was Great. It, it interesting enough. I had a couple like revelations, so let me bring to you guys some of the revelations I had. Is that somehow I had this perception that it was easy mm -hmm. because it is a very popular place uh, called Yamnuska Mountain, and it, it like it's a touristy climb in the summer, and I a lot of what there's what they say like the most uh, mountain rescues in the Rocky Mountains take place on this mountain, <clears throat> and it is uh, one of the places where the most amount of deaths take place. Um, two two ways to look at that. One of them is that it's very common. Common, I mean, um, I think tourists hear about it and they're like, oh, we're gonna climb Yam, and they wear. Like Cam said to me, he's like, they got like sandals and mm -hmm. booty shorts and vitamin water. Here we and go. They <laughs> head up the yam. And most of the time, it's there. They just shouldn't be there. Uh, it is tricky. It is scary. There's some moments there that uh, were, uh, like Aaron said, they were character building. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, but <clears throat> hopefully, Tim can come with us on the next one. Maybe next uh, week. Yeah, it's just really fun to go, like I said, to challenge yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually like any good mountain will do. Uh, and that had it all. We, we thought we'd be up and down in five hours, and it was about eight and some hours. We got there uh, about 40 minutes up. Sunrise came up over the mountains. That was super epic. And we were almost there long enough that the sun went down on us. So that wasn't expected. So maybe we were a little ill prepared a little bit uh, just on our perception of it. The other thing is I actually thought because we were so, I don't want to say ill prepared, but we, we just thought, oh, everybody does. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy. I also thought looking at it that we would probably be... Um, it's easy, like, right? Looking at it, it's like, oh, I just go up and I'm and I'm there compared to some of the mountains where you're just looking straight up forever. Um, and now knowing which I thought would be my easiest mountain was probably my toughest mountain. And then what I realized was actually there's no easy mountains. Hmm. There's actually no mountains that, um, <clears throat> like, you just get to the top and you get a you get the rewards, right? And the rewards of the summit. Um, it's not just that that moment, it's it's all the moments that got you there. And so I was like, well, it's kind of cool because that's like life. We so often sit here and sharing the wins 
and it's like, wow, what a tough week, and I battled. Um, but Thursday was my win, or one guy wrote last week, just be and was a win. Mm -hmm. And I just thought those moments aren't epic unless you've had all of the challenges or the other moments that you know are part of the grind and the climb. So, um, super awesome day. That stuff is very big for me and just feeling great in my head. Uh, I don't feel great in my body right now, but that's <laughs> that's all part of it. <laughs> Um, down but yeah, it's like you just get a full day outside, fresh air, challenging yourself, like I said. So that's my win. And another lesson from the mountain mm -hmm. is there is no... Troy asked me after. He said, "Just I just want to do an easy, short one to start. And I said, that that's, then it's not for you. Yeah, <laughs> no. Truly. Like, no. at the end of the day, there is no easy, short summits. No. Got to earn them. They're called hills. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, guys, let us. Do you, did you cry? Um, uh, okay, let's get organized so we can just we missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna get you guys stick around. We're getting to we're getting to them now. We're getting to you guys. What's important? Cam, sort of a win was the oldest headed back to New Zealand. Uh, but I had a great three and a half week visit with her. Downside might be next June when we see her again. But so happy and proud of her, chasing her dream and gaining an excellent education. Have a great week. Mm. Perry says, I'm getting better or getting healthier, sorry, feeling better, ready to hit the streams when they open. That's awesome. That's great, Perry. Uh, I love the nymph tonight and I can't wait to tie up a bunch. Some to give away and some to use. Yeah, Lisa, Perfect. let me know if that if that tip helped with the staples because that tip is a game changer. Yeah. Mr. Rick Link, my win is a fly rod I've worked on between hospital visits is about two days away from being done. He will be like a little kid at Christmas, then I can finally build a new fly rod for me. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Rutherford. James, my win took the fam ice fishing and my wife caught her biggest laker on the hard water. Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Mr. Dickow, my win of the week. The old Bearcat is back taking care of equipment, sharpening skates for a local junior hockey team out of Rocky Mountain House. Feels great to be needed again. That's <laughs> wicked. <laughs> Full circle, man. I know. It's coming back. <laughs> old retirement, dust off the old skate sharpener. It's good to hear, Barry, and that team is lucky to have you. Mr. Chaz, a couple of great wins. Winter camping last weekend with a couple of good dudes from work. Uh, Wednesday got a call from a top of a mountain from two amazing people. Uh, mm -hmm. Made my day a very special moment for me. So Chaz got, was one of the guys who got FaceTimed because he will be up there with us one day. And we wanted to share with him um, all of that. Your peak bagging exploits. <laughs> I, you have to wait. I will post it tomorrow. Uh, I was going to show it here, and it just didn't work and whatever. But uh, there's a really cool video of a section of this climb. Uh, so make sure you check it out on my Instagram. First cast, last pass. I'll post it today or, or probably tomorrow. Um, yeah, it was... Got some pooty in your pants. <laughs> Puckering. Uh, Mike Risco, my win was running a six minute mile this week despite my 10 pound Christmas cookie belly. <laughs> Gonna have to trip down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond, my win for the week was finally getting to see my wife in assisted living after quarantine from COVID contracted over Christmas. Another great TNL guys. Oh, that's awesome. Um, we're glad you got to spend some time with your wife and we hope yeah. that she's doing well as well as you. You guys have had a tough little go here, Raymond. So, yeah. uh, we're thinking with you, a rack and a nine mil. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Jones, my win, got to see so much authentic excitement out of my oldest as we ventured north on the QE2 to watch her cousin play in a tournament. Totally filled my bucket. Hanging with Dana and checking out Rock Mountain Fly Shop was awesome as well. Have a wicked weekend, everyone. Oh, Mr. Hillbilly, my win for the week. Got some much needed improvements done in my shop, and then I cracked open my fly kit that I got for Christmas, and I tied my first couple of flies. 
without too much swearing, and he did a fantastic. <laughs> you did like, super good. Like I was unbelievable. I was impressed. Yeah. First lies, that was awesome. Keep it up. Yeah, David, my win is finding this site. Well, we're happy to have we're you. Glad buddy. you're here, and you're part of the TNL fam. Um, let's see if that fit on the screen. My win. Was just having oh so I was just having trouble thinking of my win being a challenging tough week with my kiddos and life just a struggle, but then I remembered my meet and greet with my new doctor. Nothing crazy. Looking forward to working with her, but I didn't have much to tell her about, and she said because I didn't have much other um, than history to tell her. So she was happy that I'm so healthy. I'm very healthy. And I'm grateful that I have my health. My kids and my wife are also very healthy, which I'm grateful for. Life is a roller coaster, but thinking of the wins and what I'm grateful for will get me through the tough parts. And that's exactly why we do the wins, because you look for them in the week. And that is a great win, Adrian. Thanks for sharing. Huge win. Mr. McKenna, spent some time with my mom in the hospital this week. She had a close call. But win, she's home now and doing well. Uh, Thank you, buddy. This is a great win. Mr. John Miller. I won Fly Ingo, but really I've had a great week. Accomplished a lot on my latest remodel project, getting the demo done without any injuries or stepping on any nasty old nails. Thanks for <laughs> another great evening. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Uh, make sure you send an email to uh, tnl at flyfishingboarder.com. Um, get your address so I can get this stuff sent out to you within the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> Realism. <laughs> uh, Jacob. Mr. Reimer, my week started fairly disappointing finding out my dad's partner has also been diagnosed with cancer. Um, and my dad is currently battling cancer. But my win came today at the archery range. My son looked at me and said archery is his thing and that he loves doing. Um, and then he encouraged me to pick it up, pick up a bow and give it a try. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> We're thinking of you as well, Jacob. Austin. Well, our win is that you found the show. <laughs> yeah. My win of the week was flying back home from work and being back with my dogs and the wife. Cheers, gents. Cheers, buddy. Yes. We're glad you're here and found Good us. Good to have you. We're Eric, my win for the week being here with you all. I look forward to this every week, being able to help people at work and just being encouraging to others. So many people are hurting. I'm enjoying being able to brighten others' day. Yeah. So. That is a good dude yeah. right there. Yeah. I like you too, Eric. <laughs> I like <laughs> saying <it>, everyone. <laughs> Ryan, win this week is just friends. Being reminded a lot this week of a hard time during the summer. <laughs> Got to get up to see you guys at Rocky Mount Fly Shop. Love this adventure we all go on Thursdays, and OQP it is. Uh, OQP stands for Only Quality People, and that sums up the group the TNL fam that exists here. Mm -hmm. um, and every Thursday is an adventure because we <laughs> literally don't know where we're going. And uh, uh, we just strap in our seatbelts. Yeah, Karen, she says, my win is powering through January blues and getting back to the vice too. Yeah. yeah that's good, awesome. Good to be back in the vice. Roger, the reason I was late getting on tonight, we got my daughter moved into her house, kind of bittersweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big win was a fierce storm blew through just as my wife and I had pulled away to head home. Uh, also, having been able to spend time with the vices, so we were getting into the groove again. And I believe he was dropping his daughter off. The college, yeah. yeah. <laughs> NC State or something, I think. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Cole Clayton. Uh, my win was this week was tying this last fly. My stimulator is probably my favorite fly, and this one got me super excited to get back out with Craig Jones to chase that big cut bow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sean, <laughs> thank God for Advil. Made it through the week at work. <laughs> a wonderful job. Yeah. Joe Mattinton. Matt Mattinton. Mattinton. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, great wins for you both. Mine is venturing up to the Tampa Bay area this past weekend and found some nice mangrove flats to fish for snook and tarpon. Uh, a couple hours from here, but definitely worth heading back to on a nice weekend. Only a couple hours for some tarpon. I think I would drive it a <coughs> lot. Yeah, I would be fishing. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to drive like 20 hours to go ice fishing. I'm driving far. Yeah, twice yeah, as far to go ice fishing this weekend. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, my win this week, Mr. Fuller, is being able to remember to take life as it comes and to just surrender to the things that are out of my control or not necessarily worth worrying about. And isn't that the elixir? Yeah. The people who don't mind, don't mind. The people who don't matter, we don't care. <laughs> But we put so much energy into things we can't control. I know. And to people that we actually don't care about. Yeah. And we worry about their opinions. And we try to control things that we cannot control. And therefore, that is a energy vampire in itself, leaving yeah. us to not spend energy on the other things in life that fill our cups. Gotta keep the cups full. Joel Sather. Joel Sather. Win is similar to Tim, being able to spend a bit more time at the vice than I have been tying for the Seychelles. Okay. Fun to tie flies that I may not have tied otherwise and getting excited to explore a new place. Yeah, I would yeah. be excited to go to the Seychelles too, buddy. That's My awesome. win is getting to go with Joel and Alicia <laughs> to, to the Seychelles. Seychelles. Me too. Crazy. Saying, like, I'm, weird, just I know. I'm looking forward like, to those I'm, wins. I'm looking forward to it. You heard it here Win, first. Wins folks. to come. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, my win this week is the gratitude and ever-growing passion for fly fishing and all the community that surrounds it. Thank you, everyone. And uh, Travis did a wonderful thing this week, and that's where I'll leave that. I hear some of this stuff and realize my problems are trivial. Yeah, yeah Trout, I hear you, man. Another, oh, here. Turn it off for a second. Turn it back on. You know. Let's see if we can get through it. Just a little more. Just a little more. Dun, dun, there it dun, is. Dun, dun, dun. All right, Tim's camera <laughs> gets hot. <laughs> we to figure that one out. Oh, uh, Tim's not going anywhere. Oh, I'm going to Cold Lake. That's what he was asking. Oh. Nice fishing. I was like, he's not, he just turned off. <laughs> Pull drone. My win is deciding on the truck to upgrade after my Ford died. It's weird that a Ford died. F O R D found on <laughs> road dead. <laughs> uh, well, some great wins, guys. Let me Love see if it. I can, uh, sometimes. Cause we're almost at the end. I, I kind of want to show this video <laughs> if I can mess around a bit now. Yeah, Cold uh, Lake is uh, it's interesting, Jacob. It's uh, definitely very time specific and location specific. Okay. Don't give up on it. Hold tight, folks. We're going to do something never before seen here. And uh, look at that. I don't know Work. if there's any audio. I don't care. I don't see it. <laughs> Will be the audio. We will play by play if you guys can see this. All right, here, what you see is a mountain and Dana, and that is straight down. So there's these chains that they have uh, fastened into the side of the mountain so that apparently you can get across. Uh, you're supposed to be play by play with me. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. look at that step. Great step. There we go. <laughs> We're not analyzing yeah. this. We're just... Uh, but that is so why would they do this? Because there's no other way to get through this pass safely, or gully yeah. or coal or saddle. Um, so yeah, they've, they've attached these chains here. The fascinating thing is, is you don't have a lot of room for your feet. And so this one coming up here is, uh, yeah, you can tell because forces them out. Yeah, you've got to go. Just gonna put some music in the background. That one there, that right there, you have to lean like it's uh it's lean not, back to it's get not around, over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to this point and we're like, where do you go? And then we actually thought this chain was broke. Oh yeah, because it's it, hanging down. It's just hanging down there. We thought it was broke, and we we're supposed to keep going, right? Um, I said to Aaron, I think you should, I think we have to actually rappel down this. Uh, and, uh, so obviously like any good friend would do, I make him go first. 
Well, you gotta yeah, make sure he's uh, okay. And watch him. Yeah, so it is crazy to think about how somebody got them in there. I think a lot of work was done from a helicopter, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, or at least they were all in harnesses and stuff when they did it. Yeah, and they were probably coming off the top. Uh, the other side of this to the left of your screen is like a vertical drop of like a thousand feet. Yeah, that 900 is a bit intense. Feet. So, yeah, and then I'm like, hey, Aaron, can't hear the audio, but I was like, how, how did you do that? I couldn't remember. I was so just like, do I go like, forward? Just or go backwards. backwards. <laughs> just jump. <laughs> well, see, we wear like ice cleats on our feet, and they're not great for rock. They're good for like if there's ice. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. And uh, so Aaron's sitting here. Like, it's not over. <laughs> it's just the chains are over. Yeah, anyways, that's about how much room you got to do crazy things like that. Yeah, that's that's something. But that's how it goes. So, anyways, I did figure out how to did show it. that. Good job. And uh, there it is. Obviously, the camera has an interesting angle, and Tim shut off again. So. <laughs> It's so hot in here, you have no clue. I know, it is. <laughs> it is really hot. It's just a little yeah. warm. Just because just the show's ending, and that's so it is. It's all right. Everybody knows what I look like. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> well, there you're back. They're back. back. You're actually sweating. I, I'm, I know it's hot. Okay, it's 9.30, that's why it's so late. Uh, all right. We love you guys. We do. Uh, we're not going to play Street Fighter. <laughs> or were we going to play Peace Out? If I don't play this song, Sean's never coming back. <laughs> uh, Street Fighter 2 next week. Next I week. will challenge Tim. The loser chugs a beer. All right. And that uh, sounds good to me. So uh, you guys all have an incredible week. Be somebody's reason to smile this week and then come back and tell us all about it. Yeah. Uh, Next week is episode three, and it is the, we the got hair the stonefly nymph and the boogeyman. The boogeyman, yep. It's a gooder. Boogie Some man. good flies. Big streamer. Boogie another nymph. Man, that's going to be a great one. Yep. Uh, and if you didn't tie tonight, quick ties will be up sometime in the morning. You can check them out on our YouTube page. And uh, it's about how she goes. So yeah. get after them. Until next time. Trying to still figure that out. We're almost at a hundred episodes. Go gang signs. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out. Just do a little bit of this. T N L. <laughs> P. I can feel my body. You're cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up me. Do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So be top of time.
All right, for all the good folks who stuck around, you're clearly going to see <laughs> Harugan beat him. Start the game. Not a chance. You're going oh down. Oh, my goodness. You don't even understand. Insert coin. One or two players start. Um, do you press start? Press press a button. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, man. We going? Oh, I'm going to go with Tim. I'm Tim. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, oh, I'm Dana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you never want to do is do leave it. the show early because <laughs> two and a half hours. Zengi. Is... <laughs> this is ghouly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, look at how oh, I'm so fit. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Jump, jump, kick, punch, fall. No. Yeah, take that. Oh, Tim, <sighs> look at this is us. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Why? Oh. I know I'm so much better at fighting than you. This oh, makes total look sense. At this. This is what epic. is this? I don't think I hit you once. <laughs> I don't think you Look you're at good. that. Oh, what, the heck? what we can do is we can just oh, do this. Oh, look, I did some damage. It was minor. Okay, but I don't even. Just give me a second to warm okay, up. Wait. I need to figure out where All my right. kicks are. All right. Kicky punches. Bam, 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 bam. That's a kick. Okay. Where's block? What are you, you doing? Do, I know what you're gonna do next week. Ah, oh, come on! Is you're gonna go home and you're gonna buy. Oof. Ah, Oof. Oof. Punch, Oof. kick, Oof. slap. Oof. Don't you want this to go to round two or three? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> well, why would I want to? I don't understand. It just decreases my odds. How is this even happening? Like, I've kicked you as many times. Oh come oh. on! Come on! Oh. This isn't fair. You've oh been playing all week. I know. Okay. We I know. Could, we could play your uh, cameras out. That's fine. We don't need a camera. <laughs> this camera's out. Oh, come on. Oh, it's just me. I beat the well, crap Well, you know you. what that means, folks. You can only find this <sighs> game here on the show next week. <laughs> Why am I Chun-Li? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no, pick her. No, we're done. Bye.